Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Infinite Simulation, From Konoha to Moon. Chapter 31. The time rewinds back two days. Somewhere in the death forest. Uchiha Itachi, I want you dead. Obito's expression was so fierce that he wanted to tear apart his fellow clan member. Since obtaining the Mangekio Sharingan and Hashirama's cells, he had only suffered one defeat. That was during the Nine Tails Rampage and his battle with Namikaze Minato. That was, after all, the famous Golden Flash, losing to him was not embarrassing. But this time, it was a ten-year-old brat. Not only couldn't he defeat him, but he also couldn't argue with him. It was truly infuriating. Obito's current mood was almost as furious as when he witnessed Kakashi killing Rin with his own hands. But the previous time was a rage of incompetence, and this time was still the same. He realized that even if he used his trump card, he might not be able to defeat Uchiha Itachi. Unless it was the double Kamui. Obito clenched his fist, his expression constantly changing. The reason he didn't snatch back his eye was because of two reasons. First, this eye was a gift he personally gave to Kakashi, taking it back might expose his identity. Second, he didn't need it. With Kamui, he believed he could go anywhere, and the empty eye could be used to install the Sharingan for using a Zanagi. Tisk, it's really miserable. The annoying voice of White Zetsu sounded. Do you want to die? Obito asked coldly. All right, let's change the topic. Don't you want revenge? White Zetsu smirked and said, We don't need to take action, we just need to release Sarutobi Hiruzen from control. Obito subconsciously looked at him. This was indeed a good method. Simple and effective, easily instigating internal strife within Konoha. And he could take advantage of the chaos to take Kakashi away. With the Hokage and Uchiha at odds, it would be reasonable to have one less Kakashi. For a while, no one would associate him with it. Obito took a deep breath and said, we can't release him directly. We need to deal with some of Sarutobi Hiruzen's subordinates. Otherwise, it won't be lively enough. He decisively locked onto two Hokage advisors. With Danzo dead, they were the most suitable. And because Sarutobi Hiruzen was being controlled, their power had also been reduced. As he expected, Obito smoothly established a connection with the two Hokage advisors. In the eyes of Yudatane Kaharu and Midokado Homura, Obito was indeed mysterious and dangerous, but if they could release Sarutobi Hiruzen from control and regain their power, it would be worth it. There was no doubt that the two of them were deeply entangled in the vortex of power. Obito really liked them, because this kind of Konoha was the least threatening. Another meeting was held. Nara Shikaku originally wanted to present the scroll, but the two Hokage advisors introduced Obito first. They said he was a root ninja who was extremely skilled in genjutsu and mental ninjutsu. He was certain that the Hokage was being controlled by the Sharingan and had a way to release it. Nara Shikaku knew that something was off. But he didn't ask anything and just informed them about Uchiha Itachi's plan to go out the day after tomorrow. Yudatane Kaharu, Mitokado Homura, and Obito all showed excited smiles upon hearing this. The former two thought that they were being helped by fate, while the latter thought that he could seek revenge. The most troublesome thing about Uchiha Itachi's dojutsu was that it was effective against a large number of people. But now, with so many Jonin present, Obito felt that the weather had cleared up for him. After the meeting, Li Shang received the information. It's that masked man. Uchiha Itachi could almost confirm the identity of this rude ninja without hesitation. Distinguished Heavenly Gods was the dojutsu of the Mangekio Sharingan. To unlock it, only the Mangekio Sharingan had a chance. But it was only a chance. The masked man definitely doesn't know that it's distinguished heavenly gods, otherwise, he wouldn't be so confident. Li Shang couldn't help but smile and said, Well, if it's a helping hand that comes to us, we can't refuse. We have another reason now. Hokage-sama, along with the manipulator of the Nine Tails, is attempting to eliminate the Uchiha. Shisui and Uchiha Itachi also laughed. They found that this mysterious masked man didn't seem very clever. I will help him, Shisui readily agreed. He got up and left. After squatting in the Hokage's office for half an hour, the two Hokage advisors and Obito entered. What's going on? Sarutobi Hiruzen, although affected by the distinguished heavenly gods, behaved no differently from before. Obito didn't answer. He raised his hand to cover his eyes and activated the Mangekio Sharingan. 
Saratobi Hirazan felt a tremor in his body, his face gradually becoming dull, and soon he pretended to look shocked. What have I done? He exclaimed, his face filled with anguish. Oh, my good friend, I have killed you. You detained Kaharu and Midokato Homura exchanged glances. They're back, they're all back. They quickly recounted what had happened recently and, in the end, expressed their loyalty. Everything is ready, we just need the east wind. With just a word from you, Konoha can be set right again. First, capture Shisui and the others, then eliminate the Uchiha, and Konoha will welcome a bright future, they said. Sarutobi Hirazan naturally agreed. He called for another meeting. But only members of the Sarutobi clan, the Mido clan, the Yamanaka clan, the Shimura clan, and the Inoshika Cho were present. Except for the Hyuga clan, all the well-known and prominent clans of Konoha were here. After scolding the Uchiha, Sarutobi Hirazan announced that the operation would begin the day after tomorrow. The gates of Konoha, Uchiha Itachi registered with the two gatekeepers and provided them with the Hokage's order. After completing the procedure, he left Konoha. This time, his mission was to go to the Fire Country metropolis and negotiate with the Hina Trading Company. As he passed through the long death forest, Uchiha Itachi couldn't help but shake his head. They really can't wait, huh? He stopped in his tracks. Countless ninjas surged around him. Hokage-sama, what does this mean? Uchiha Itachi asked. Yu Uchiha manipulated the Nine Tails rampage and killed the root leader Danzo. Your crimes are unforgivable, Hokage-sama replied. Hokage-sama, the Uchiha have nothing to do with the Nine Tails rampage. Do you have any evidence? Uchiha Itachi questioned. My words are evidence. Quote dot 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 quote. Uchiha Itachi fell silent for a moment and asked again, Did you order the killing of Shimura Danzo? You Uchiha manipulated me. Where's the evidence? I am the Hokage, my words are evidence. Sarutobi Hirazan snorted coldly and repeated his reasons. Surprisingly, you detained Kaharu and the others had no objections. Uchiha Itachi couldn't help but feel disappointed. What exactly did he believe in when he previously believed in the will of fire? Although Sarutobi Hirazan said those words under Shisui's control, the others didn't. Uchiha Itachi looked at Obito, and even though he was disguised, he couldn't hide his hatred. He raised his hand and said, Hokage-sama, this guy attacked me earlier and has Sharingan. He is highly likely to be the true mastermind behind the Nine Tails rampage. How do you know? Sarutobi Hirazan asked instinctively. Suddenly, there was silence all around. Even Midokado Homura and Yudetane Kaharu widened their eyes. Obito's heart suddenly skipped a beat, a very dangerous premonition surging up. Then countless ninjas appeared, forming a new encirclement. Li Shang looked at Sarutobi Hirazan, filled with sorrow and anger, and said, Hokage-sama, why are you rebelling? Although the plan was simple, the effect had already been achieved. No matter how much the others questioned, they couldn't change the truth spoken by Sarutobi Hirazan. Sarutobi Hirazan's sudden confession left everyone dumbfounded. This included the two Hokage advisors and Obito. However, Obito reacted quickly and without hesitation activated his Mangekio Sharingan. Kamui, his body suddenly twisted, but this action precisely proved his identity. The enormous pattern in the Nine Tails eyes was clearly visible back then. Ninjas who had the fortune of experiencing and surviving it almost instantly sensed this familiar fluctuation of the eye power. There was an uproar. Li Shang smiled faintly. When people's hearts scatter, it becomes difficult to lead them. Hurry up. Obito's expression remained unchanged, but his heart was in a panic. Uchiha Itachi looked at him expressionlessly. A katana suddenly appeared behind Obito and pierced through him. The distortion of Kamui disappeared, leaving only a pool of blood. Uchiha Itachi had prepared a special clone underground in advance, aiming to deliver a fatal blow to Obito. Although there was no body, the likelihood of surviving such injuries was very low. Li Shang glanced at it and said nothing. Obito had a Zanagi, so it was difficult for him to die. However, consuming one Sharingan was already a good result. The Uchiha clan was not exterminated, but Obito didn't have much left. Li Shang turned his head and looked at the three clan heads of Ino Shika Cho. Nara Shikaku gritted his teeth and stepped forward, angrily saying, the Hokage has betrayed Konoha. The Nara clan is willing to support the Uchiha. 
Yamanaka Inuichi and Akamichi Choza quickly followed suit, saying, we feel the same way. In an instant, half of the power was lost. Only the Serutobi clan, the Yamanaka clan, and the Mito clan remained. Hiruzen, what should we do now? Mitokado Homura's voice trembled slightly. Even though it was a scene where the forces were evenly matched, the situation suddenly reversed. His heart couldn't handle it at all. The ups and downs were just too exciting. Hiruzen, you're so calm, you must have a trick up your sleeve, right? Yudetain Kaharu noticed his expression and quickly asked. Both of them no longer called him Hokage, proving that they were indeed in a state of panic. They called him by the name they used when they were teammates. I never thought we would fight side by side again. Serutobi Hiruzen showed a nostalgic expression. His distinguished heavenly gods were not released. But memories and such still remained. Hiruzen, this is not the time to talk about that. Yudetain Kaharu was already too anxious to listen to his sentimentality. She didn't want to die here. Let us do our last bit for Konoha. Serutobi Hiruzen rushed towards Uchiha Itachi with a loud roar. Leaving behind two stunned Hokage advisors. They both had one thought in their minds, they've gone mad, they've all gone mad. Li Shang raised his hand and the battle began. He had no intention of participating. After all, he knew his own limitations, he was just an ordinary Jonin. Even though no one saw him as a ninja. This world simulation has reached the highest evaluation, the Uchiha clan massacre incident has been resolved. You can choose to return by suicide or return freely, but the evaluation and rewards cannot be increased. The slogan for free return is, if I could start over, I would choose Li Bai. After returning, the Hokage ninja world will continue according to the current plot. The simulator, which hadn't been seen for a long time, suddenly displayed four lines of text. There was a lot of information. The highest evaluation was within Li Zhang's expectations. He used his eloquence to change the beliefs of Uchiha Shisui and Uchiha Itachi, and dealt with Serutobi Hiruzen, Shimura Danzo, and others. Leaving a deep impression on Obito in passing. Imperfect as it may be, he suspected whether the simulator wanted to embezzle his rewards. What shocked Li Shang was the last line of words. If he understood correctly, it meant that everything he had done had become a real past. The next time he entered the world of Hokage ninjas, the plot might undergo earth-shattering changes. But fortunately, he had made preparations in advance. The existence of Tendo would provide him with unimaginable convenience. And Uchiha Lang would become a puppet that only he could control. Using it would be completely problem-free. Li Shang came to his senses and suddenly sighed. He felt a bit reluctant to leave. Looking back at his short ten years, the most emotional were undoubtedly Uchiha Shisui and Uchiha Itachi. And their destinies had undoubtedly undergone earth-shattering changes. Li Shang pondered and considered that he had done a good deed, at least saving the lives of many people. It was the energy of the simulator that surprised him even more. The perfect clearance could actually have an impact on reality. The world of Hokage ninjas, for his main world, was equivalent to a small world or a parallel world. Li Shang couldn't be sure for the time being. But he knew he had to find a way to bid farewell to his two Tendo members. The battle ended quickly. Serutobi Hiruzen, Yudetain Kaharu, and Mitokado Homura, the three old men, had long lost their strength from their youth. Not to mention the fact that there was a spy among them. After the three of them were killed, the rest quickly surrendered. A carefully orchestrated play came to an end. Here, Shisui handed over a scroll and said, there are the things you requested to be recorded. He couldn't help but admire Li Zhang's meticulousness. Not only did he make Serutobi Hiruzen and Uchiha Itachi perform in front of the major ninja clans in Konoha, but he also recorded everything with a camera as evidence. Li Shang didn't take it and said, give it to the three swordsmen and let them make it public. No problem. Shisui put away the scroll and looked at the chaotic battlefield, saying, the old era has passed, and a new era is about to come. It belongs to our Tendo. Li Shang raised the finger guard in his hand and said. Shisui was slightly startled and smiled. Yes, it belongs to our Tendo. After cleaning up the battlefield, they returned to the Hokage Tower and held a new Jonin meeting. Li Shang was probably the only ninja who was not a Jonin but could attend the meeting. As for the candidate for acting Hokage, I wonder what everyone thinks.
The one presiding over the meeting was Nara Shikaku. He already held the position of Hokage's advisor. The reason why it was an acting Hokage was because the official Hokage needed the approval of the daimyo. Almost everyone looked at the four Uchiha. After a moment of silence, no one spoke. Li Shang shrugged, wondering why it was like this again. He spoke up, I think my teacher can do it. In terms of strength, both Shisui and Uchiha Itachi were capable, but they were too young and would easily provoke other ninja villages. In addition, during the early stages of reform, there were too many places to take the blame. Although everyone was currently getting along well, when it came to their own interests, they might turn their backs and resort to underhanded tactics. In that case, let Uchiha Fugaku inherit the will of the Hokage, attract firepower in the open, and stir up trouble in the dark. After Li Shang finished speaking, Shisui and Itachi nodded in agreement, and thus Uchiha Fugaku became the new Hokage. He never dreamed that this day would come. After Sarutobi Hiruzen took the stage, the Uchiha actually understood that they had no chance of becoming Hokage. Li Shang stayed in Konoha for a few more days and finished all the things he needed to explain. Finally, taking advantage of the expansion of the heavenly world, he proposed to personally go to the fire country metropolis. On the way, he chose to return to the main world. Simulation of this world ends. Evaluation. Your eloquence is comparable to Jackie Chan's persuasion skills, leading two lost young men back to the right path. Reward. 5 simulation coins current balance. 9 beat 1 random talent 99% chance of obtaining a high quality one and 2 random items 99% chance of obtaining good quality ones. The next simulation will start in one week. Related event. Hokage Ninja, Konoha Collapse Plan. Li Shang opened his eyes. It was still his shabby little house. The past ten years had flown by like a movie, without causing any trouble to his spirit. And only one night had passed. Tisk, if this simulator were applied to work. Li Shang shivered. Why do I have such a terrifying idea of being hanged? Orochimaru is quite brave. Li Shang saw the final prompt of the simulator and couldn't help but feel a sense of respect. Facing Konoha, which possessed three pairs of Mangekio Sharingan, Orochimaru still carried out the plan to destroy Konoha. He is truly an exemplary figure. There are two additional random items in the highest evaluation, I wonder what they are. Li Shang was somewhat surprised, but also felt it was reasonable. Having only one talent was a bit stingy. Magic Wand A rank, you have unimaginable talent in magic, and can even rival legendary magical girls. Grandpa on the subway looking at his phone. JPG. Having an A rank talent was definitely winning the jackpot. But this description made Li Shang feel a chill in his lower body. The simulation won't have female characters, right? He refused. My second brother, invincible in the world, is definitely indispensable. He has no interest in being a magical girl. The whole pink twin tails and white stockings thing is too embarrassing. Mysterious item, E rank, to be delivered tomorrow. Special pet, C rank, to be delivered tomorrow. Li Shang rubbed his chin, finding the wording interesting. This also proves that the main world he is in is likely not ordinary. He wasn't interested in the E rank item, but he thought the C rank pet shouldn't be too bad. Hum, it would be best to have an elf, succubus, or a Gundam. A new day begins. Li Shang put on his headphones. Quickly use the nunchaku. Hum ha ha. Remember, a martial artist must be kind-hearted and invincible. He hummed a song while walking to school. On the way, Li Shang thought of a question. Can he extract chakra, or can he use ninjutsu and taijutsu? He ran to a quiet park to test it out. But unfortunately, the physical constitution of humans cannot be generalized. He and ninjas are completely different at the cellular level. The good news is that some taijutsu is still useful here. For example, throwing ninja tools, Uchiha's swordsmanship, and martial arts. Without the support of chakra, the power is definitely far inferior to that of a janin. Li Shang estimated that he could reach the level of a grandmaster. Of course, not like the disrespectful Ma Lao Shi, but like Bruce Lee. Without any hesitation, Li Shang arranged his own schedule. During this period, besides going to school, he planned to practice taijutsu. He didn't aim to become invincible, just being able to defend himself would be good enough. A few minutes later, Li Shang arrived at the school gate. He stopped and looked up. 
A huge red banner was hanging in the center of the gate. In his impression, the school only hung banners for extremely important events. Like a certain student getting into Tsinghua or Peking University. Although Li Zhang's school was the top one in their county, it was average nationwide. Only one or two students would get into Tsinghua or Peking University each year. But that's not the point, the point is the content of the banner. Congratulations to Li Shang, a student from class 2 of the third grade, for being admitted to the University of London in advance. After confirming that he hadn't fallen under a genjutsu, Li Shang was left with only one possibility. The E-rank item he obtained last night. Otherwise, there is no way to explain it. Unless it's like Luo Mingfei in, Dragon Blood, who was discovered because of his special bloodline. But he remembers that was the University of Chicago. Li Shang entered the classroom and immediately received everyone's attention. After a moment of silence, they picked up their pen and notebook, their hands moving up and down. Although everyone was well-educated, faced with the University of London, they couldn't help but blurt out a plant and an animal. Li Shang couldn't say anything else, so he could only maintain a smile. Just then, a cough sounded from outside the door. It was their Chinese teacher, Lu Zhongguo. Li Shang, come to my office. Li Shang stood up and left his seat. Lu Zhongguo was his homeroom teacher, and he was particularly cold during class. After all, there were too many mischievous kids, and he couldn't control them without being stern. But at this moment, he was very enthusiastic. I don't have Coca-Cola that you all like here, so just make do with plain water. Li Shang took the paper cup, feeling a bit flattered. Although he wanted to say that he preferred Sprite over Coca-Cola. Li Shang, you really surprised me quietly. Lu Zhongguo said with emotion, it makes me feel like I'm dreaming. A student from the University of London came out under his guidance. His reward was inevitable, it's nothing. Li Shang shook his head and said. He was more used to the teacher who suddenly appeared from behind the door or the window with a face that seemed to owe him a lot of money. Not bad, Lu Zhongguo said with satisfaction, being humble and not arrogant, this humility is rare and worthy of all students to learn. I didn't know you were so good at speaking. Indeed, whatever a good student is in school is right. Li Shang changed the topic and asked, Teacher, how did you confirm that I was admitted? According to the normal procedure, he should have submitted an application to the foreign university and been accepted before he could be considered admitted. Oh, speaking of this, I almost forgot. It's because the University of London sent a representative personally. We verified her information and found no problems. Lu Zhongguo patted his head and said, she said to let you meet her when you arrive. Li Shang couldn't help but narrow his eyes. This was completely abnormal. The University of London actually sent someone to visit a student they admitted. She's in room 210. Lu Zhongguo continued, go meet her. Li Shang nodded. Room 210 was on the second floor and was where the teachers usually held meetings. Li Shang pushed open the door, looked around, and finally his gaze fell on the person by the window. He was very surprised. It turned out to be a girl about the same age as him. She was sitting on the table. Her short boots were thrown aside, revealing slender legs wrapped in black stockings. Her eyes were cold and seemed to be absent-minded, with a hint of emptiness. Her delicate appearance was like a doll, with long blue-black hair cascading down to her waist. The only flaw was that her face was a bit flat, like a steel plate. Otherwise, she would be perfect. Apart from that, she seemed vaguely familiar, as if he had seen her somewhere. When she saw Li Shang, her eyes brightened, but quickly dimmed. She spoke, Welcome, Junior. Very fluent Chinese. Her tone was also very calm, without any emotions. Li Shang couldn't quite figure out her nationality. But he was a boy who had experienced storms and wouldn't be confused by beauty. Hello, I'm Li Shang. Asked Ati. The girl casually picked up a red letter and swung her feet wrapped in stockings. I prefer to be straightforward, I hope you don't mind, Junior. Asked Ati said in a calm tone, you are not going to the University of London, but to the research institution under the Magic Association, the Clock Tower. So it's Type Moon. The Magic Association, is it the kind of magic I understand? Astarte's eyes flickered with surprise. It's truly puzzling how someone who knows nothing about the Magic Association can obtain a special enrollment. It's not the kind of magic you're thinking of. 
Astarte took out a red gemstone and uttered a word. A flame flickered in her palm. Li Shang fell silent for a moment before asking, you call this magic? He was serious with his sarcasm. He had always wanted to know in his previous life. You can think of it as magic in novels or movies. But remember, as a magician, you should never casually mention the word, magic. Li Shang nodded. In the world of type moon, the concept of magic is more like a law of the world, and each type possesses unimaginable power. Let me give you a brief introduction. The clock tower is one of the three major departments of the Magic Association. It is located on the outskirts of London and has a history of over 2,000 years. We manage, conceal, and develop magic, and we are at the forefront of magical research. Astarte paused for a moment, picked up a piece of paper, and continued reading with a calm expression. The clock tower is divided into 12 disciplines. General Foundation, Individual Foundation, Spirit Evocation, Mineralogy, Zoology, Inheritance, Botany, Celestial Bodies, Creation, Curses, Archaeology, and Modern Magical Theory. Each discipline has its own specialized magical system, theoretically without any distinction of superiority or inferiority. I come from the discipline of Mineralogy. The magic I just used is one of the gemstone magic systems. By combining different types and quantities of gemstones, different magic can be used. Hum, it's expensive. Only magicians with financial means can afford it. Li Shang thought of Rin Tasaka, one of the heroines in Fate Stay Night. She also used gemstone magic. After her father, Tokiomi Tasaka, died and she couldn't afford the huge expenses, she had to work part time. According to the normal enrollment procedure, you would need to study general foundation for five years with the main course being magician knowledge, and then transfer to other disciplines, just like going from high school to university. Astarte looked at the admission letter and said, Hum, you are a special enrollment student, so you can skip general foundation. Special enrollment, Li Shang looked at her and asked, What's special about me? I'm curious too. Astarte blinked meaningfully and said, Originally, this spot belonged to the El Meloy family, but it was temporarily replaced by you. El Meloy. Li Shang heard a familiar surname. It is related to Kenneth and Waver. Both of them participated in the Fourth Holy Grail War. But the former had already died, and the latter returned to the clock tower and inherited the El Meloy title, becoming one of the Twelve Lords. In the FGO mobile game, Waver borrowed the power of Zhu Liang and was summoned as a servant by players. The clock tower has twelve disciplines and twelve lords. They are the top figures in the world of magic. Astarte propped up her chin with one hand and said, Fortunately, Lord El Meloy too is in trouble, so he probably won't interfere with your affairs. If it's the second, then it refers to Waver. Li Shang quickly deduced that the current time point is just before the start of the Fifth Holy Grail War. In the plot of, Lord El Meloy two case files. Starting off by offending one of the main characters doesn't seem good. But considering Waver's personality, he doesn't seem like a magician who would be petty. Originally, I was commissioned by the Lord of the Mineralogy Discipline to invite you, but since you are unfamiliar with the clock tower, you should read this book first. Astarte took out a book and handed it to Li Shang. Thank you. Li Shang opened it directly. In his previous life, he had some knowledge about the clock tower, but it was all from anime and not very specific. This book, Introduction to the Twelve Disciplines of the Clock Tower, was more detailed. Astarte stared at him without blinking, her gaze as calm as space. Half an hour later, Li Shang looked up and said, I have a basic understanding now. Do you have any idea which discipline you want to join? Astati tilted her head, I actually hope you join the Or Science Department and become my junior. A moment of dumbfoundedness, Li Shang remained unaffected. His thoughts were not on women, but on the entrance to this new world. Do special admissions have any privileges? You can have a teacher. Astati explained, in the clock tower, lecturers and teachers are two different concepts. The former only gives lectures, but the latter, in addition to being a lecturer, also serves as your personal mentor. If the senior can recommend a teacher for me, I can join the Or Science Department. Li Shang thought for a moment and said, under normal circumstances, he should choose modern magic and follow the protagonist Weber. But he had unintentionally offended him, plus the Elmero family had been in a bad state since Kenneth's death. Li Shang had no need to get involved in these struggles right now. 
His cheat was the emulator. As long as he had enough talent, it would be easy for him to intervene. Very clever. Astati hooked her finger and said, I really like you, joining the ore science department won't be a loss. Li Shang ignored her joke and said, Thank you, senior. Next is the aptitude test. Astati didn't mind retracting her finger and said, A magician's aptitude is determined by the magic circuits within their body. The so-called magic circuits can be understood as special nerves. Without them, magic cannot be used. The criteria for evaluation are the quantity and quality of the magic circuits. How do we test it? It's simple. Astati put on her boots and jumped off the table. Li Shang noticed at this moment that the girl was only about 1.5 meters tall, a head shorter than him. Astati also noticed the height issue. She tiptoed slightly and reached out to press on Li Zhang's head. At the same time, she took out a blue gemstone and effortlessly crushed it into powder. Quote dot 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 quote. If Li Shang remembered correctly, the hardness of a blue gemstone was 9, second only to the diamond's 10. Astati uttered a syllable. A mysterious blue enveloped him. Li Shang suddenly felt a faint burning sensation in his right arm. He rolled up his sleeve and saw three circuits. Three magic circuits in quantity, but of high quality. Overall, your magic aptitude is A-level. Astati took two steps back and said, After activating the magic circuits, the body will feel uncomfortable, and the longer you use them, the more painful it becomes. The switch for the magic circuits is called the mind's image. You can feel your mind's image with your eyes closed. Li Shang closed his eyes at her words. A sword appeared in his mind. He controlled the closure of the magic circuits, and the faint blue light disappeared. You possess five magic attributes. Earth, water, fire, wind, and void. Astati continued, Without a doubt, you are a magical genius, so being specially admitted is only natural. Li Shang thought of his A-level talent magic wand. There was no doubt that this was its manifestation. For more specific details, wait until you arrive at the clock tower, and I will explain it to you in detail. Astati took out a Nokia and handed it to him, saying, it's the latest model. Contact me after everything is ready. Host joins the clock tower, activating the space-time node. Open the main world simulation, you can save the game, and return to the save point after death. You can store up to five time nodes in the save. Open the host's attribute panel. Li Shang took the Nokia and couldn't help but smile, saying, okay. Archiving the main world meant that Li Shang could act without restraint. As long as he didn't archive to a dead end. But with five saves, the chance of a dead end was small. Fate stay night was not safe. This world was in a mysterious state of decline, or more commonly known as the end of an era. The magical energy in the air was very thin, and resources were also scarce. Many magicians had resorted to desperate measures as a result. For example, using their lives to refine magical energy. In addition to that, there were even more dangerous things. The hidden vampire species. For Li Shang to enter the field of magicians as an ordinary person was already a very rare occurrence. It was like lazily delivering oneself to the mouth of a wolf. But now, with the function of archiving, he no longer needed to worry. Panel. Li Shang silently recited in his mind. A semi-transparent screen appeared in his line of sight. Name. Li Shang. Occupation. Magician and active. Attributes. Strength E1, Endurance E1, Agility E1, Magic E1, Luck X. Magical Circuits. 3. Magical Attributes. Earth, Water, Fire, Wind, Void. Note. 1 represents the level of a normal person, X represents an exception, and the number cannot be displayed. Very ordinary attributes, nothing unexpected. Even Li Shang could understand the meaning of Luck X. Having unlimited chances to restart, Luck was already maxed out. Li Shang took out his Nokia phone and played with it, finding it quite boring. He didn't know how long it would be until he could use a touchscreen smartphone. Hum, Li Shang stopped in his tracks. The door to his rented house was wide open. A thief, Li Shang felt a bit strange. Because this guy was quite bold, not even bothering to close the door. He quietly approached the window and saw the true face of the thief through the glass. A hidden fox. Hum, not joking. It really was a hidden fox. And it was a hidden fox walking upright. It rummaged through the refrigerator and complained, why is there no rabbit meat? 
Li Shang took a cold breath, making his contribution to global warming. Why would anyone eat such a cute rabbit? Ah, no, this hidden fox can actually speak. He suddenly thought of the C rank pet reward from the simulator. After ruling out all the wrong answers, only one truth remained. Li Shang knocked on the door. The hidden fox turned around, propping its elbow against the refrigerator, and said, Human, the only surviving species under the human category, primate order. Judging from your appearance, you're probably a high school student. Li Shang was at a loss for words. He felt that there were too many loopholes. Are you my pet? No, strictly speaking, there is no contract between you and me. The hidden fox opened its eyes, as if squinting, but you did summon me. Li Shang remembered the hidden fox emoji pack on his phone from his previous life. What can you do? A C rank should be quite useful, theoretically. I have an appraisal skill. Quote dot 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 quote. How did this feel so familiar? Were you the fox director from that popular appraisal video on the internet in your previous life? But this skill did sound good. Li Shang would make use of it. For example, appraising holy relics. The so-called holy relics were the artifacts left behind by famous historical figures. The most important thing was to participate in the Holy Grail War, which required summoning a servant related to the holy relic. After learning that the simulator had an archiving function, Li Shang planned to participate in the Fifth Holy Grail War in Fuyuki City. After all, he has many servants he wants to summon. Ahem, they are all his wives. For example, Artoria, Nero, Morgan, and Kurozuka. Can other people see you? Li Shang remembered another crucial question. I can. The nine-tailed fox understood the trouble that a talking pet could cause, but except in front of you, I pretend to be an ordinary fox. Are you a protected species? I'm a second class one. The nine-tailed fox raised its little paw, looking quite proud. This is really too cruel. Li Shang scratched his head, you have to stay at home and not go anywhere, understand? The nine-tailed fox immediately showed a disdainful expression, looking very indifferent. In a few days, I'll take you to London, and then you can come out and wander around. There was no way, Li Shang was a law-abiding citizen, so he asked, besides appraisal, can you do that? He immediately made a few moves with his nunchaku. All right, you don't have to show off your half-assed skills. One day, when I buy a pair of nunchaku, I'll show you a thing or two. The nine-tailed fox waved its little paw and said, I want to eat rabbit meat. No problem, I'll go buy some. Li Shang couldn't help but laugh, you've come to the right place, our city is famous for raising rabbits, not a single rabbit can leave alive. He went out and bought a few pounds of rabbit meat, as well as a toy sword. It was still a long way until the next simulation. During this time, Li Shang took the opportunity to familiarize himself with Uchiha swordsmanship. Actually, it was just to regain muscle memory. It was really sorry to have exchanged for such a terrible modern young body. What's your name? I can't just call you Nine-Tailed Fox, right? Li Shang practiced swordsmanship in the corner of the living room. The Nine-Tailed Fox ate cold rabbit while watching TV. It was watching the popular TV series, The Heaven Sword and Dragon Saber. Nick. Oh, Li Shang continued to sweat. Compared to Uchiha Lang, his body was really average and needed more time. But on the third day, his Nokia phone rang. Junior. It was Astati's voice. No surprises. After all, she was the only magician who had his phone number. Nothing, I just wanted to ask what kind of transportation you want to take back to London, I'll arrange it in advance. I have no preference, anything is fine. How about taking a boat? It will take about 20 days to get to London, and I can teach you some basic magician knowledge. Astati suggested. Why? Li Shang was a little puzzled. This senior sister was being a bit too nice to him, which made people worry. A boy had to protect himself when he was outside. Especially in the type moon world, who knows when he would wake up at a magician's ritual. Because the teacher I recommended to you is my teacher, in other words, you should call me senior sister. Astati explained, the teacher is out on business and won't be back at the clock tower for a month, so she asked me to teach you for a while. I see. Li Shang breathed a sigh of relief. If what Astati said was true, then she was indeed someone worth befriending. In 20 days, he could not only learn magician knowledge, but also have another simulation and gain new talents. 
Then let's leave today. Li Shang wasn't prepared anyway. He had delayed for a few days because he wanted to practice swordsmanship, but now that he had this opportunity, there was no need to wait. Okay. Astati hung up the phone. Half an hour later, Li Shang heard a knock on the door. So fast, he was a little surprised to see Astati. She was dressed differently from yesterday's red windbreaker, wearing a dress instead. Still showing off her slender legs. But instead of black stockings, she wore blue ankle socks. Oh, an unknown creature. Nick suddenly appeared. A talking hidden fox. Astarte showed no surprise on her face and calmly said, in a world where fantasies are almost extinct, if you were to appear in front of other magicians, there would only be one outcome, being torn apart alive. Nick took a few steps back and said, I didn't say anything just now, and you didn't hear anything. It sensed an unprecedented terror from the girl in front of it. Li Shang was troubled, wondering how to explain Nick's origin. But Astarte seemed uninterested and said, pack up your things, we'll take a plane to the magic city later. After saying that, she casually took off her sandals and sat on the sofa in the living room, picking up the remote control. The TV was playing the drama, Love Across Time. Li Shang glanced at it and saw Astarte's fair toes peeking out from her socks. They were very small and cute. He quickly turned his head, picked up Nick, and entered the room, instructing, don't speak casually next time, those magicians are really ruthless. Seeing it nod, he asked, what do you mean by calling her an unknown creature? Well, it means that she is incredibly powerful, and I can't figure out her true abilities, Nick paused and replied. I see. Li Shang believed him and smiled, saying, I thought you meant she wasn't human. Astarte, after all, was a magician, and there was no reason for her true nature to be easily seen through. He put down Nick, packed his clean clothes into a suitcase, and returned to the living room, where he thought of another question. Do we need to arrange pet transportation? No need. Astarte shook her head. It wasn't until they arrived at the airport that Li Shang understood what she meant. It was actually a private plane. Big sister. As the cabin door opened, accompanied by cheerful voices, a white figure rushed towards Astarte. But she pressed her index finger against her forehead. The girl waved her hands unwillingly a few times but couldn't touch her, so she had to give up in the end. Li Shang looked up. The girl was wearing a white Lolita dress, pink twin tails, and a fancy star-shaped eye mask on her right eye. Although she was pretty, her outfit seemed too much like a two-dimensional character. Student of the Mineral Science Department, Yvette L. Layman, you can call her Yvette. So you're this year's special admission, Li Shang. Yvette turned her blue eyes and noticed the extra boy. Her eyes instantly lit up, and she asked, little handsome guy, do you have a girlfriend? It's okay if you do, do you mind having multiple lovers? But before Li Shang could answer, Astarte pulled her ponytail and went to the cockpit. Put away your frivolous act. Tisk, it seems like Big Sister really values him. Yvette took off her eye mask, revealing a green peacock stone. Do you want to provoke me with your magic eye in front of me? Astarte directly knocked her on the head and said, he is my junior brother. To put it simply, a magic eye is a special equipment for magicians, with independent magic circuits and effects. Yvette's eye was an ordinary magic eye transformed from a gem. It could be used to peek into others' emotions. Magic eyes of higher levels are usually innate, possessing unimaginable power. For example, Medusa's petrifying magic eye or the direct death magic eye of the two-form ritual. Yvette widened her eyes in shock and blurted out, to think that the witch took a liking to such an unlucky and pitiful little guy. What did you say? Astarte glanced at her. Yvette shrank her neck in fear. I'll go fly the plane. She turned around and sat in the pilot's seat. The reason Astarte called her over was because she had the talent of an experienced driver. Whether it was a plane or a cruise ship, she was very skilled. You can sit wherever you want. Astarte returned to the cabin and said, but remember to fasten your seatbelt. After arriving in the magic city, the three of them went to the port. The Ocean Phantom, built by the famous Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, is approximately 362 meters long and 72 meters high. It has facilities such as a ballroom, ice rink, gym, cinema, and martial arts arena. Yvette jumped around and introduced, this is one of the largest cruise ships in the world. After saying that, she somehow took out a camera and handed it to Li Shang, 
asking, Sony F828, the latest model that hasn't been released yet. Can you take a picture for me? A vet stood by the shore, showing a bright smile, and at the same time, raised her arm and made a peace sign. Quote dot 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 quote. Li Shang suddenly realized that both of them were rich women among rich women. Especially asked Ati, sister, do you want to take a photo? Yvette excitedly waved at Astati, but noticed her expression and quickly put away the camera. The three of them boarded the ship. Yvette quickly ran to the cockpit. You stay in this room. Astati pointed to the door with the number 303. They were currently on the third floor of the cruise ship. I live next door, you can call me if you need anything. Okay. Li Shang opened the door and was immediately surprised. The room was extremely luxurious, exuding an air of wealth everywhere. He had only seen it on TV before. Tisk, it seems like my senior sister is using the magic of money, not the magic of gems. Li Shang put his luggage aside, lay on the soft bed, and couldn't help but comment. The extravagance was inhumane. Who could withstand this kind of lifestyle? Nick also jumped onto the bed, bounced a few times, and said, the bed is nice. After a while, there was a knock on the door. Astati handed the ten books in her hand to Li Shang and said, These are the textbooks for the first two years of the basic subjects. Thank you, senior sister. Li Shang readily changed his way of addressing her and asked, Are there any weapons on the ship? Like swords. If you're interested in combat, the clock tower offers specialized combat courses, and any student can sign up. Astati shook her head and said, but traditional magicians have always looked down on close combat. Magicians consider themselves nobles and prefer elegant battles. With the help of magical workshops and magical attire, they can easily defeat enemies while chatting and laughing. Instead of using fists, axes, swords, and other weapons, which would be too embarrassing. In addition, they also dislike modern technology. Li Shang explained, because I'm just an ordinary person now, I want to use them for self-defense. There is an armory on the first floor, but it's meaningless to practice on your own. Astati smiled and said, If you want to learn, come to the martial arts hall tomorrow and find me, it's also on the first floor. Li Shang suddenly felt that his senior sister was like Doraemon, knowing a little bit of everything. When he arrived at the armory, he couldn't help but be amazed. There really were all kinds of weapons. In addition to the common swords and staffs, there were also axes, spears, whips, and more. Li Shang only took a samurai sword and a pair of nunchucks. Back in the room, Nick put on a serious face and performed a scene of a hidden fox using nunchucks to attack. Li Shang was defeated miserably. He estimated that Nick's nunchuck skills were at least at the level of a chunin. Because he had just switched bodies, Li Shang hadn't gotten used to Uchiha swordsmanship yet, so it was normal for him to lose. Night fell. Before going to sleep, Li Shang saved his progress. Half asleep, he heard Nick's voice. Wow, there really is a water monkey. This little knife can really stab your butt. I'm impressed. Li Shang subconsciously looked over. There was a puddle of water in front of the window. A completely soaked monkey was staring at him. Its eyes were very lively. Making Li Shang feel like it was a person, not a monkey. In the next moment, he shivered suddenly accompanied by a gust of cold wind, before he could react. A claw, flickering with a faint black light, reached towards him. Blood splattered. You have died. Please choose a save file. You have chosen the most recent save file. Returning immediately. Evaluation. Monkey stealing peaches truly lives up to its reputation as the strongest move. Reward. None. Li Shang abruptly opened his eyes. Li Shang glanced at the clock on the wall. It was nine o'clock in the evening. There was still some time before the attack of the water monkey. Although he was a bit drowsy at the time, he still noticed something was off. For example, the eyes and movements were more human-like. Li Shang got up and put his katana under the covers. He was certain that it was the work of a magician. The reason being that the cruise ship was Astati's personal item. As a magician, she would definitely leave behind some kind of barrier or warning magic. Li Shang recalled the previous incident of the monkey stealing peaches. It was fast, but within his acceptable range. And he felt that its movements were not smooth enough. This feeling was the same as when he left the ninja world and returned to his own body. 
This once again proved that the water monkey was being controlled by someone. I should be able to kill it. Li Shang thought seriously for a few seconds and said. He was not the kind of person who sought help when faced with difficulties. Besides, with the simulator, he couldn't possibly fail. Nick, Li Shang nudged the nearby hidden fox. Although Nick had sensed the arrival of the water monkey earlier, he didn't have time to react. So Li Shang planned to give it an early warning. It had identification skills, so there might be some surprises. Not sleeping in the middle of the night, are you trying to ascend to heaven? Nick grumbled with sleepy eyes. Wait, there's a water monkey. Where, where, Nick jumped up energetically, asking, where is the water monkey? Was the hidden fox so obsessed with the water monkey? Li Shang pointed to the window and said, it hasn't arrived yet. Nick immediately understood, lay back down to rest, but took out his nunchaku. Li Shang looked around and asked, where was your nunchaku stored before? Oh, it's my other skill, storage space. Nick explained. You actually have such a good thing. It can't hold much, just the size of a bedside table, 20 centimeters high. That's already pretty good. Li Shang was a bit envious. Space was a rare skill no matter where it was. But fortunately, Nick's things were his things. He also had this storage space. After the conversation ended, Li Shang and the hidden fox closed their eyes and pretended to sleep. It was unknown how long had passed when Li Shang heard the sound of water droplets falling on the ground. Then he felt a cold wind blowing. It should be because the water monkey had opened the window. Li Shang continued to pretend to sleep. The sound of footsteps gradually approached. Although he had lost the support of chakra, his ability to locate by sound was still there. Estimating the distance, Li Shang lifted the bedsheet without hesitation and threw it at the water monkey as a prop to block its vision. At the same time, with his right hand at the fastest speed, he stabbed the katana out. The weapons collected by Astati might not be divine weapons, but they were definitely top-notch. The katana almost pierced through the water monkey's back without any obstruction. Piercing it through the intestines. But there was no scream. Li Zhang's expression froze, and he let go of the katana and jumped back. A faint green substance, like flowing water, surged towards the blade, instantly turning into molten iron. Ha! The nunchaku in Nick's hand swung, leaving only afterimages. In an instant, it struck the water monkey's head. Well done! Li Shang picked up his backup weapon, a fruit knife on the fruit plate, and threw it directly. The fruit knife was like a shuriken, accurately hitting the water monkey's heart. Fresh red blood gushed out. The water monkey's movements became momentarily sluggish. Seeing this, Nick's eyes gleamed, and he smashed the nunchaku down. The overwhelmingly powerful blow made the water monkey completely lose consciousness. An invisible fluctuation spread. The water monkey twitched twice and then stopped moving. Just then, the door opened, and Astati appeared. She was wearing loose pink pajamas, with her long hair in a mess. It indicates that she left in a hurry. Are you guys okay? I sensed abnormal souls. Astati examined Li Shang with her light golden eyes. Nick clearly felt ignored. We're fine. Li Shang looked at the water monkey. At this moment, it looked ordinary, like an ordinary monkey in a zoo. Short-tailed monkey, a type of macaque, larger in size, usually over 50 centimeters tall, but with a short tail. Nick looked disappointed and said, this can't be the water monkey, and it can't have the ability to fuse with a sword like before. Astati squatted down, took out a green gemstone, and crushed it into powder. Gradually, a human figure appeared on the body of the short-tailed monkey. Methods of the necromancy department. Astati said expressionlessly, no wonder it was able to bypass my barrier. It seems that my power is still insufficient. Li Shang recalled the information in the records. The necromancy department mainly consists of two magical systems. One is necromancy, manipulating and using spirits. The so-called spirits are the souls left behind by humans or special animals and plants after death for various reasons. The legendary ruler of the necromancy department, Euryphus, even has an army of evil spirits. The other is summoning magic, as the name suggests, summoning powerful beings. For example, summoning heroic spirits that have transcended human existence after death through rituals, and enslaving and commanding them, is called a servant. But the heroic spirits summoned by magicians are just copies and do not have personalities. 
only in the Holy Grail War in Fuyuki City, with the power of the Holy Grail, conservants with personalities and power be summoned. And the water monkey in front of them is obviously the work of necromancy. By trapping a certain spirit in the body of a short-tailed monkey, it can kill invisibly under remote control. And it is difficult to trace back to the whereabouts of the magician. It seems that someone doesn't welcome me. The first person Li Shang thought of was Weber. After all, he took away the position of the Elmero family. But Weber doesn't seem like the kind of person who would do such a thing. Rest, I will investigate. Astati took out a ruby, sealed the body of the water monkey, and said, there is no absolute crime in the world of magicians. Li Shang nodded. His current level is limited, and he can't find out anything, so it's better to leave it to Astati. Although they have only been together for a short time, he can tell that his senior sister is an extremely proud person. Causing trouble on her ship is undoubtedly offending her. Astati closed the door and looked at the number 303 on the door. She spread her hand, and a diamond floated up. Immediately, it turned into invisible ripples and disappeared. The next day, Li Shang came to the martial arts hall, planning to receive guidance from his senior sister. Although he learned a lot of physical techniques in Konoha, there should be no problem in understanding the fighting skills of magicians. There are many courses in the clock tower, but I only learned two. Astati wore a white training suit, and her hair was fixed with a black diamond-shaped headband. She looked like a cold and beautiful girl from the student council. The eight extremities fist and the swordsmanship, Yagayu Shane Ryu. The former is from Li Xuan, and the latter is from Yagayu Daimanji. Do you want to learn? I want to learn. Li Shang answered without hesitation. Not learning would be foolish. Li Xuan and Yagayu Daimanji are both servants in FGO. They are quite powerful, but he was also a little puzzled. Both the eight extremities fist and Yagayu Shane Ryu have many lineages. Why did Astati only mention Li Xuan and Yagayu Daimanji? Could it be that she really learned from them? Li Shang didn't believe it. Both of them have been dead for many years. Because of his photographic memory talent, Li Shang learned quickly. Although the process was quite painful. Four days passed in the blink of an eye, and Li Zhang's cheat system came back online. Life Unlimited Simulator Loading. Loading complete. Our slogan is to create miracles with heart and be happy even without money. Current World. Hokage Ninja. Related Event. Konoha Collapse Plan. Simulation begins. Age 0, you were born in Kurigakur, belonging to the Kagura clan, named Kagura Mochizuki. Age 6, you were captured by Orochimaru for research and died in an experiment. This world simulation has ended. Review. The first step of a genius often ends in premature death. Reward. Two simulation coins current balance. 10 b 1 random talent 99% chance of getting garbage. Li Zhang's biggest complaint is not dying at the hands of Orochimaru, but rather why the beginning of the Leaf Village's collapse plan took place in Kurigakur. In other words, if he wants to change his fate, he must participate in the Chunin exam. But fortunately, he has Uchiha Lang's disguise, so he can manipulate things once he arrives in Konoha. Therefore, the most urgent matter is how to survive in Kurigakur. It's no joke within the bloody mist before Turumi Mei takes the stage. Li Shang ponders for a moment and looks at the newly acquired talent. Water Monkey E rank, you have excellent water affinity and are difficult to drown. It's not very useful for a ninja, but it's quite useful in the main world. If he encounters another attack from the Water Monkey a few days ago, he can jump into the sea to save his life. Li Shang picks up the book, Daiyuan Studies, from the bedside table. As the foundation of a magician's knowledge, Daiyuan Studies is undoubtedly the most important book. Daiyuan refers to the magic power in the atmosphere. In contrast, Xiaoyuan refers to the magic power within the magician's body. But in modern times, Daiyuan has become scarce. Only a few places still maintain decent magic power, such as the clock tower. A night passes without any words. Li Shang doesn't rush to do another simulation. After all, there is plenty of time. He opens the door and finds Astati, wearing a black off-the-shoulder t-shirt with a small vest, standing outside the door. Her top reveals her slender waist and flat abdomen. There is no excess fat, but rather a sense of strength. Aren't we going to the martial arts hall today? 
Li Shang asks when he sees that she is not wearing training clothes. Let's eat first, and then I'll teach you magic, Astati turns around and walks towards the restaurant. Li Zhang's eyes light up. Is it finally time for real combat? Breakfast consists of lean meat and preserved egg congee and five small steamed buns. Very Chinese. Li Shang was initially worried about the so-called British cuisine. After all, its reputation precedes it and is quite intimidating. But in London, it's probably hard to avoid. He can only hope that the clock tower is considerate enough to provide different meals for students, rather than just fish and chips. Astati glances at him, seemingly guessing what he's thinking, and says, if you want to eat Chinese food, then joining my teacher's school is your best choice. Because she and you come from the same place, and you can come over for a meal whenever you want. The same place. Li Shang shows a curious expression. He doesn't remember any magician from the clock tower who specializes in Eastern magic. Because according to the setting, Western and Eastern magic are completely different systems. Yes, my teacher will surprise you, Astati smiles and doesn't elaborate further. Li Shang can only suppress his curiosity and look forward to the so-called surprise. After breakfast, the two of them arrive at an empty training room. There are barriers all around, so don't worry about magic going out of control, Astati takes out a red gem and says, magic can be divided into ancient magic and modern magic. However, due to the decline of Daiyuan, ancient magic is difficult to reproduce its power, so what we learn is modern magic. Li Shang nods. He has read relevant introductions in the textbook. It's a very simple distinction. Modern magic mainly uses one's own magic power, while ancient magic uses the magic power in the atmosphere. The difference in power between the two is like night and day. Magicians who use ancient magic can leave their names in history as heroic spirits. Like Medea, the magician from the ancient times was summoned as a caster servant in the Fifth Holy Grail War. Modern magic doesn't have so-called rankings. Astati threw a ruby to Li Shang and said, you can use syllables as rankings. The longer the syllable, the more powerful it is. For example, the yin chi bullet I'm about to teach you, it originates from an ancient curse in the Nordic region and has only one syllable. The process of casting magic is somewhat similar to ninjutsu, but the hand seals are replaced with chanting. Li Shang held the ruby in his left hand and extended his right hand. Because he had just opened his magic circuit, his magical power was insufficient and he could only rely on the magical power stored in the gem. The magic circuit gradually lit up. Li Shang uttered a syllable. A black, bullet-like oval-shaped magical energy suddenly flew out from his fingertips. It quickly made contact with the wall. The originally invisible barrier revealed a faint red light. Li Zhang's magic instantly dissipated. To be able to successfully cast it on the first try, your talent is enough to rank among the top 100 in the clock tower. Astati praised him generously. This sentence sounds familiar. It seems to be used to evaluate Tasaka Rin. Li Shang glanced at the gem in his hand, which was only slightly dimmed but not shattered. It indicates that his Yin Qi bullet is indeed weak. According to the original work, the Yin Qi bullet is a curse that can lower a person's physical functions, but if the magical density is high enough, it can produce a bullet-like effect. Although increasing magical output density should not be a consideration for a beginner, with senior sister's gems, he can give it a try. Sister, can you give me more gems? Li Shang asked somewhat embarrassedly. In a sense, he was living off a rich woman. Frequent use of the magic circuit will have serious consequences. With your current level, you can only use it 20 times at most, and you won't be able to bear it. Astati took out five rubies and said, after using them all, continue studying the knowledge of a magician. Thank you, sister. Li Shang felt quite lucky. The sect was free from internal strife and was quite harmonious. It seems that his luck X is not just limited to the simulator. In the afternoon, Li Shang realized that he had underestimated the pain caused by the magic circuit. He felt as if his right arm was being continuously burned by flames. It was a scorching pain. Li Shang thought for a moment, not in the mood to read, and turned on the simulator. Simulation start. Age zero, you were born into the ordinary ninja clan of Kurigakur, and your father named you San Madero. Age one, Due to your physical condition, you could only be taken care of by others. Age 2, you showed extraordinary intelligence, and your father began teaching you the basics of ninjutsu. 
Age 3, you were admitted to the ninja school ahead of schedule and became a somewhat famous prodigy. Age 4, you and Higurashi Mizuki were known as the twin stars of the ninja school and were hailed as the next generation of the seven ninja swordsmen. Age 5, Orochimaru captured you and Higurashi Mizuki in Odogakur. Higurashi Mizuki was used for experiments, while you were forced to become Orochimaru's vessel and were beaten to death in the battle for a spot. End of this world simulation. Evaluation. Being too famous is not a good thing. Reward. Two simulation coins current balance. 11b, one random talent, 99% chance of getting trash. I have a grudge with Uchiha Itachi from the previous event, and now I have a grudge with Orochimaru. Li Shang shrugged. Next time, either avoid Orochimaru's preference for collecting geniuses or try to persuade Orochimaru with words. But considering the issue of the highest evaluation, he would definitely choose the latter. So, should the ninja world play with words? However, Orochimaru is harder to persuade than the young Uchiha Shisui and Uchiha Itachi. A single wrong word could lead to death. Indomitable spirit D rank enter the next simulation, randomly lose an organ, but as a cost, you can carry two D rank or E rank talents. Randomly lose an organ. Li Shang scratched his head. There are some organs that absolutely cannot be lost. This talent, indomitable spirit, comes from the reader master of Saint Yang Fish. Li Shang held his right arm, relieving the pain caused by the magic circuit. Today, he learned the second magic. Projection. Using magic to materialize objects that have existed in reality. But it's just superficial, a kind of magic with extremely low efficiency. Most magicians don't know how to use it. Except for the protagonist, Emma Yashiru, who cheats. But his projection magic can't be called projection magic, it's a byproduct of his innate bounded field, Unlimited Blade Works. It allows him to project weapons that closely resemble the original, sword, concept. The bounded field, classified as a forbidden spell by the Magic Association, is a powerful magic that can rewrite reality. It is extremely rare and can only be created after years of accumulation. And it is almost impossible for outsiders to learn. Li Shang returned to his room and turned on the simulator. This time, he wanted to compete with Orochimaru in terms of eloquence. Simulation begins. Age 0, you were born into the ordinary ninja clan of Kurigakur, and your father named Yusuke Taro. Age 3, you joined the ninja school. Age 4, you defeated Hazuka Suigetsu and became the most outstanding student in the ninja school. Age 5, you met Orochimaru and caught his attention with your knowledge of past lives. But your mediocre skills made Orochimaru suspect your origins and he tortured you for information. Unable to bear the humiliation, you chose death. Simulation in this world ends. Evaluation. Knowledge is power. Reward. Two simulation coins current balance. 12b, one random talent, 99% chance of getting trash. Orochimaru is really difficult to deal with. Li Shang knew he had fallen into the trap of arrogance. The knowledge he had acquired was indeed advanced. But Orochimaru was too smart and quickly absorbed this knowledge, wanting more. And Li Shang was exposed. Serpent tongue, E rank, you can speak the language of snakes and communicate with them. Is this talent supposed to take me to the world of Harry Potter? Li Shang couldn't help but shake his head. Because it was useless in the ninja world. The snakes in Ruchi Cave could speak human language. Could it be that Serpent Tongue increased the chance of learning Sage Mode? Li Shang woke Nick up and went to the restaurant for breakfast. He chose the classic combination of soy milk and fried dough sticks. Li Shang, a frivolous tone. It was the pink twin tailed girl, Avet. Hello, Avet. Li Shang maintained a polite smile. A girl who clamored to be your mistress was undoubtedly dangerous. He never believed that good things would fall from the sky. Ah, your tone is so unfamiliar, it hurts my heart. Avet said, and her body leaned towards his shoulder. Li Shang immediately changed his position. It's been a long time since I've seen such an honest boy like you. Avet missed and wasn't angry at all. She said, based on your performance, I believe you have a bright future in the clock tower. So you came here to praise me. Li Shang took a bite of the fried dough stick and sarcastically said, are all magicians as leisurely as you? Of course not. Avet blinked, let me reintroduce myself. I am the daughter of the prestigious Magi family, Layman. 
If you want to know more about mage eyes in the future, you can always find me. Indeed, she was another rich loli. Every mage eye was invaluable, not to mention a magical family engaged in processing and selling mage eyes. Li Shang finally remembered who Yvette was. In the original plot, she was a student of the mineralogy department and later became a spy in the modern magic department. My greatest wish is to become the monarch, Elmero II, who is Weber's mistress. Now let's talk about business. Yvette took out a document and said, I fought hard to get this opportunity from the boss, so don't let her down. It's about the investigation of the water monkey. Li Shang could probably guess how Yvette got it. As for the second half of the sentence, he pretended not to hear it. But there was no harm in getting to know Yvette. In the plot of, Magic Eye Train, her power might come in handy. Thank you. Li Shang finished breakfast quickly, took the documents, and returned to his room. The investigation was clearly stated. Although it didn't specify a particular magician, Astati found traces of their activities on the shore. Through her methods, it was determined that it was the work of the Department of Spirit Descending and Prayer Theology. There were many magic groups in the clock tower. They were divided into two categories, student interest clubs and groups formed by magicians for a certain purpose. The goal of the Prayer Theology Society was only one, the ritual of descending spirits. And this was also the most interesting and daring magic topic of the Department of Spirit Descending. How do modern magicians summon spirits? The Clock Tower, as a university-like institution, had 12 famous magic topics. Similar to the Millennium Prize problems in the mathematics world of the previous life. Any magician who could solve them would receive unimaginable honor and rewards. Summon spirits using me. Li Zhang's face turned slightly cold. He would remember this grudge in his little notebook. Regardless of the reason, he had to give something in return. But the immediate priority was to improve his strength. Training in eight extremes fist and kendo in the morning, practicing magic in the afternoon, and simulations at night. A packed schedule. Simulation begins. Age zero, you were born into the ordinary ninja clan of Kurigakur, and your mother named Yu Junhong. Age one, encountered enemies, and the entire family was wiped out. End of simulation in this world. Evaluation. Becoming a Hokage ninja is just a game of luck. Reward. Two simulation coins current balance, 13B and a random attribute point. Oh, attribute points. Li Shang was somewhat surprised. He didn't expect to gain such a reward. You have gained one point in magical attribute. The attribute panel has been updated. Please check it yourself. Li Shang reached out and activated the magic circuit. He vaguely felt that his magical power had increased by about twice. The reason it was vague was that he originally had very little magical power. Doubling it was not that significant, but it gave him great hope. As long as he continued to simulate, Li Zhang's attribute panel would surpass that of a servant, which was not just a dream. By then, he could also fight with a servant like Emma Yashuru. Li Shang pressed his forehead, closed his eyes again, and started a new simulation. Oh right, I forgot to use my talent. Retaining memories, eloquence, photographic memory, theater general, snake-like voice. He didn't bring an A-rank talent magic wand because he found in his previous attempts that it was not useful for ninjutsu. And although the D-rank talent, indomitable spirit, allowed him to carry two more, he had obtained too few talents at the moment, so it was not necessary to use it. Give me a bloodline limit ninja from the Hazuka clan. After using the talent of the theater general, Li Shang heard the slogan of the simulator in his ears. Simulation begins. Age zero, you were born into the Hazuka clan of Kurigakur, and your mother named you Hazuki. Age three, you joined the ninja school ahead of time. Age four, you became the genius of the ninja school, and through this, you obtained relevant information about medical ninjutsu from the clan. Age six, you defeated your cousin Hazuka Mizuki, who challenged you, and gained great fame. Age 7, you met Terumi Mei. With your silver tongue and talent, you became her disciple and learned about the abnormality of the Mizukage. Li Shang participated in a simulation called Higurashi Himizuki, which sounded like a female name but was actually a young boy. He asked his mother, who said that she dreamt of a red moon on the day she got pregnant. Fortunately, it was just a dream and the red moon didn't actually appear. Otherwise, it would have been troublesome. 
Who knows what kind of scene would have unfolded with a whole family suffering from a mental illness. Himizuki, a boy with blue short hair and carrying giant swords rushed into the room, gasping for breath, and said, Turumi Mei sama wants you to come. Chojuro, what happened? Li Shang calmly stood up. Although Turumi Mei hadn't officially taken office as Mizukage yet, she was already considered the next Mizukage. Only Li Shang knew that Chojuro would also become Mizukage in the future. But he would be the weakest Mizukage. To put it simply, Chojuro, you're so embarrassing, you should just quit. Somebody got injured. Oh, Li Shang wasn't surprised. He became Turumi Mei's apprentice not only because he was good at speaking, talented, and good-looking, but also because he knew medical ninjutsu. Due to the constant bloodshed in Kurigakur, everyone understood one thing. Learning medicine couldn't save Kurigakur. Except for a few exceptions like Tsunade, medical ninjas weren't good at combat. In the high-pressure situation of Kurigakur, it was as good as sending them to their deaths. Therefore, medical ninjas were quite rare. And Li Zhang's path to becoming a medical ninja was smooth. Because he had stayed in Konoha. Although he had changed bodies, his memories remained. Plus, he had developed excellent chakra control over several lifetimes. In Turumi Mei's eyes, Li Shang was truly a gift from nature. Not only was he skilled in water-style ninjutsu, but he was also a rare medical ninja. Li Shang followed Chojuro to Turumi Mei's residence. In addition to Turumi Mei, there was also Ao. Ao, a janin from Kurigakur, was known as the White Eye Killer. Under his eye patch was the Byakugan of the Hyuga clan, which had been exiled. Himizuki, can you see if he can be saved? Turumi Mei pointed to the ninja lying on the bed. Li Shang smelled the scent of blood and burnt flesh. Obviously, the injuries were caused by fire-style ninjutsu. Recalling what he had heard from Ao recently about Mizuka Yagura's abnormality, he could guess who was responsible. Uchiha Obito. According to Kurigakur's medical standards, this ninja could only receive basic treatment. No hope. Just wait for death. Goodbye. It's not that Li Shang was boasting about Konoha, but in terms of medical skills, Konoha was indeed in a league of its own. In the original work, Sakura's shining moment was detoxifying Konkuro. It could be said that she surpassed the entire Sunagakur, including renowned strong individuals like Chio. Kurigakur's situation was even worse than Sunagakur, so it was naturally impossible for them to develop advanced medical skills. Li Shang extended his hands. Healing Jutsu. Green Chakra appeared. He pressed his hands on the burned area, and the blackened flesh was immediately replaced. Seeing this, Turumi Mei flicked her hair and smiled. She looked at Li Shang and made a decision in her heart. Perhaps she should let him enter the center of power ahead of time. Kurigakur was truly lacking in talent. Due to the tradition of allowing killings and disliking Keke Jenke, with the demise of the Yoruichi clan, there were hardly any major ninja clans left. Currently, the only clan that barely resembled a ninja clan was the Higurashi clan. And the renowned seven ninja swordsmen of the mist were also in a pitiful state. The first generation of the seven ninja swordsmen was kicked into becoming the auspicious three treasures by a leaf village genin. The second generation died, escaped, and betrayed. In the third generation, things became even worse, with only Chojuro and Kagura Karataki remaining. Currently, Kagura Karataki is only four years old, so Li Zhang's appearance brings great joy to Turumi Mei. Especially since he is her disciple. Unlike Hoshigaki Kisame, who is practically a known traitor, always following the controlled Mizukage. Resting for a while will restore you to normal, Li Shang dissipated his chakra and wiped the sweat from his forehead. One advantage he has in this world is being born into the Karataki clan. He naturally has more chakra than others. You should stay and listen to what he has to say, Turumi Mei nodded and said. All right, he should wake up soon, Li Shang immediately understood her meaning. It has to be said that this terrible timing in Kurigakur has given him a great opportunity. If he were in Konoha, even as a Hokage's disciple, he would have to demonstrate extraordinary strength to enter the center of power. At least it would be impossible at the age of seven. After a few minutes, the Anbu ninja on the bed woke up. He shook his head, took note of the situation around him, and quickly regained his composure. No need to get up, just tell us what you found out, Turumi Mei waved her hand and said. 
Our Anbu team infiltrated the Mizukage's office and encountered two mysterious individuals. In the end, I was the only one who managed to escape. The Anbu ninja took a deep breath and said, the three of them were wearing the same uniform, with a black cloak embroidered with a red cloud. So, it's not just one person, but an organization, Turumi may frown. The situation was becoming more troublesome. A while ago, Ao used his Byakugan to detect traces of Genjutsu on Mizuka Yagura. It shocked her greatly, but at the same time, it made sense and explained why Mizukage's personality had changed so drastically. What about their identities? Turumi Mei continued to ask. One of them is Hoshigaki Kisame, and the other two, I've never seen before. One wears a mask and uses fire style, while the other uses snake-related secret techniques. Snake, Turumi Mei had a bad feeling in her heart. She took out a scroll and asked, is it him? That's right, it's him. The Anbu ninja nodded heavily. Turumi Mei Sama, who is he? You didn't participate in the Great Ninja War, so you wouldn't know him. It's normal, Turumi Mei sighed and said, one of the Konoha Sanin, Orochimaru, is now a rogue ninja. The organization that Orochimaru joined. Turumi Mei hesitated, almost blurting out an expletive. Li Shang had a similar feeling. He tasted the consequences of his actions. Orochimaru didn't betray Akatsuki like in the original story, and the only reason could be that Uchiha Itachi was still in Konoha. The plot had changed. Li Shang suddenly realized that it would be extremely difficult for him to participate in the Chunin exams. Obito wouldn't be so kind as to let him go to Konoha for the exams. So his hope lay with Turumi Mei. Of course, there was another option, to join if he couldn't beat them. The original intention of Li Shang learning medical ninjutsu was to make Orochimaru see his value. Not to be used as an experiment or a vessel. Referring to Yakushi Kabuto, it was clear that an excellent medical ninja could make Orochimaru show mercy. Even if we release Mizukage from the Genjutsu control, it will still be difficult to defeat those three, Turumi Mei rubbed her temples, feeling a headache. Kurigaku's strong individuals were too scarce. But if the problem with Mizukage wasn't resolved, the village would have no future. Chapter 41 Li Shang remained silent. He was torn between whether to help Turumi Mei or join Orochimaru and assist in his tyranny. For now, let's leave it at that, Turumi Mei said, pursing her lips. After hesitating for a moment, she continued, Chojuro, inform Hazuki of the current situation. She didn't expect a seven-year-old child to come up with a solution. But she had already decided to train him, so she naturally had to start from a young age. Yes, Chojuro replied, stealing a glance at Turumi Mei and revealing a shy smile. However, Turumi Mei clearly had no interest in him and turned to leave. Ao followed suit. They sent an Anbu to test Obito, which might cause unnecessary trouble later, so they didn't have time for idle chatter. Let's go out and let him rest, Li Shang said, getting up and pushing open the door. The field of vision was filled with a faint mist. He remembered that his destination in the main world was London, a place inseparable from fog. As Chojuro walked and talked, he explained the current situation with Yagura. In fact, they had noticed Yagura's abnormality early on. Because Yagura was a perfect Jinchuriki, they never considered the possibility of him being controlled by Genjutsu. They just thought that as a new Mizukage, he was eager to prove himself. But it wasn't until the fire was about to consume Kurigakur that Turumi Mei and Ao finally realized the truth. In theory, a perfect Jinchuriki should not be affected by Genjutsu. It must be a case of two beings sharing one body, two types of chakra. So the reasonable explanation was that Obito used his Mangekyo Sharingan to control both Yagura and the tailed beast within him at the same time. Chojuro, help me investigate something, Li Shang said after listening, pondering for a moment. He planned to drive Obito away first before doing anything else. The reason was simple. He didn't like Obito. Plus, he could start over, so Li Shang naturally wanted to do as he pleased. What's the point of being a time traveler if you're not carefree and unrestrained? What is it? Chojuro asked. Currently, he was Turumi Mei's bodyguard and an Anbu member. Although he was shy, he had connections. Kisame Hoshigaki, Li Shang said, referring to the older brother of Kisame Samahata. He was one of the seven members of the second batch of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, wielding the twin swords Haramakare, which Chojuro was currently carrying. 
Since the sword had been given to someone else, it meant that Kisame had already died. The original work did not mention the cause of Kisame's death. But Li Shang, who had been born into the Hoshigaki clan twice, had heard some rumors. Kisame died while pursuing the rogue ninja Hazuka. Hazuka was the Jinchuriki of the Six Tails and had defected because he believed his teacher was going to kill him. Li Zhang's goal was the summoning seven ninja sword scroll in Kisame's possession. After his death, the scroll disappeared. It wasn't until it was brought back through impure world reincarnation that Kisame Hoshigaki obtained it. Help me find out where he died, Li Shang said. Due to various persecutions, there were only three members left in the Hoshigaki clan. That was why no one had gone looking for the scroll. Chojuro readily agreed. Li Shang had treated his injuries every time, so he had long wanted to find an opportunity to repay him. Investigating such a small matter was a piece of cake. And Li Shang had a reason too. They were from the same clan, so it was only natural to show some concern, right? Li Shang bid farewell to Chojuro and returned to the Hoshigaki clan's residence. Mizuki, skipping class again. Li Shang asked, M Master, Master, Mizuki Hoshigaki stammered, shrinking his head. His original personality was impulsive and foul-mouthed, and he was cruel in battle, probably due to being called the reincarnation of the demon. After Zabuza Momochi's death in the original work, he inherited the decapitating carving knife. But he was just a brat, a good beating would do. After Li Shang taught him a lesson, he was left with a psychological shadow. It's because they're too weak, Mizuki said. Hazuka Suigetsu gathered up the courage to explain, there's not a single person in the whole school who can fight. Then how about fighting me? Li Shang smiled and asked. No, no, no. Hazuka Suigetsu quickly waved his hand, I can't beat you. When is your birthday? Li Shang remembered that Hazuka Suigetsu was four years old this year. Under normal circumstances, he would have been noticed by Orochimaru and taken to the Hidden Sound Village when he was five. Three more months, Hazuka Suigetsu answered honestly. Li Shang raised an eyebrow at his response. He realized that he had overlooked something. Orochimaru selecting a genius and Obito controlling the Mizukage were likely to have happened around the same time. But he also discovered a blind spot. Why did Obito leave Kurigakur? Logically speaking, even if he was discovered, with his strength and borrowing members from the Akatsuki organization, suppressing Turumime and others would not be a problem at all. Unless Obito didn't want to play anymore. After all, Kurigakur had already suffered heavy casualties. The Bloodline Limit clans and ninjas were almost completely wiped out. And after venting for so long, his anger had subsided, plus the situation with Konoha, he simply gave up on Kurigakur. For Li Shang, this was undoubtedly a good thing. If Obito insisted on holding on to the position, there was nothing he could do. Um, cousin, can I go now? Hazuka Suigetsu saw him lost in thought and didn't want to suffer any longer. Go ahead, go ahead, Li Shang waved his hand. Hazuka Suigetsu slipped away immediately. If this guy knew he was about to be captured by Orochimaru for experiments, he probably wouldn't be able to laugh, Li Shang had experienced it once and didn't want to experience it again. Hazuka Suigetsu was locked in a narrow glass jar, left to be studied by a group of white-coated ninjas. This experience is really terrible. There isn't even a piece of clothing to cover up. Li Shang walked towards the training ground. The Hazuka clan possesses a rare water-style secret technique. The most famous one is the water transformation technique. It can turn the body into water, making it immune to physical attacks. Genuine water. It's just afraid of lightning-style ninjutsu. While he was practicing ninjutsu, Orochimaru licked his lips from a dark corner not far away. A rare genius. His favorite thing is to collect geniuses. Especially those with keke genke and secret techniques. Because of Uchiha Madara, Orochimaru didn't encounter Uchiha Itachi who joined the Akatsuki organization, nor was he killed by genjutsu. At this time, he is not as obsessed with the Sharingan as in the original work. In addition, with Konoha flourishing, he naturally wants to continue to rely on the power of the Akatsuki organization. Last time he came to Kurigakur, he took Kimimaro with him. But unfortunately, he is sick, otherwise he would be the perfect vessel. And this time, Higashi Hizuki is his target. A new day. Chojuro brought the information Li Shang wanted. 
Thank you. Li Shang quickly locked onto a location. But he knew that relying solely on himself would be hopeless. So he plans to see how far the Akatsuki organization has developed. In the past, Li Shang left three scrolls for Uchiha Shisui and Uchiha Itachi. If they are obedient, they should have made arrangements in the land of water. Don't disappoint me. Li Shang found an opportunity and sneaked out. He didn't tell Terumi Mei, so she wouldn't send someone to protect him. Even though the situation in Kurigakur was extremely dire, business was still booming. Casinos, izakayas, and deals worth billions were happening every night, not suitable for children. Because they lived a life on the edge, the pressure was especially great for the shinobi. Ninjas were still human and needed to release their stress. Not everyone was like the members of the foundation cultivated by Danzo, devoid of sorrow or joy, like a stoic philosopher. After Li Shang used the transformation technique, he entered the largest casino in Kurigakur. He had previously instructed Shisui that establishing intelligence was particularly important. The Leaf Village's Anbu originally had spies in various villages, which happened to be useful. The only question was whether Tenbu had completed the layout. Li Shang went straight to the owner of the casino and said, Tenbu. He spoke in Chinese. Yes, the Tenbu organization encrypted their intelligence in Chinese. The bald middle-aged man's previously indifferent expression suddenly froze. He couldn't understand, but he had been trained in these peculiar syllables. Only the specialized intelligence group within Tenbu could understand the meaning behind them. Kid, you've got guts. Do you want to play big? Follow me. The middle-aged man showed a welcoming smile and turned to enter the room behind him. If you didn't know, you would think he was some kind of madam. Li Shang lifted the curtain and suddenly found himself surrounded by men. Two burly men stared at him with eyes as wide as bronze bells, sizing him up. The atmosphere was extremely tense and dangerous. It seemed like they would draw their swords in the next second. Since you can speak this special language, it proves that you have a connection with Tenbu, but you are unfamiliar. You are not a member of the Mist Shinobi Division, the middle-aged man said expressionlessly. According to the rules, you need to state your password to confirm your identity. Li Shang was not surprised. He had set up seven passwords for Tenbu. Only those who held the finger ring would know them all. Life and death, the cycle continues. Li Shang still spoke in Chinese. The middle-aged man's face changed slightly. This phrase was unfamiliar to him. Unfamiliarity meant that the man in front of him had a higher rank than himself. But whether he was or not would still have to be determined by the person in charge. Just stating the password was still not enough to confirm his identity. You guys can leave. The middle-aged man ordered the two men beside him to leave. He then took Li Shang out of the casino and quickly arrived at an izakaya. Leader. He stopped in front of a room on the third floor. Come in. As the door opened, Li Shang saw the ninja who was speaking. He was tall, feeling over two meters in height. Black short hair, no eyebrows, a cross-shaped scar on his right cheek, and red stripes painted on the lower half of his face. His features were too distinctive. Even though they had never met, Li Shang still recognized the ninja in front of him. He was the former member of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen, the first owner of the Executioner's Blade, Kirisame Juazu. In the original story, he was dissatisfied with Yagura's bloody rule and defected to join the Akatsuki organization. His teammate was Uchiha Itachi, who later returned to Kurigakur to carry out a mission but died from the tailed beast bomb. Li Shang couldn't help but smile. So, it was him again, causing another butterfly effect. Without the Uchiha clan massacre, he indirectly influenced the fate of countless people. Why are you laughing? Kirisame Juazu looked at him as if he were looking at a dead man. A murderous intent filled the air. There was a setting in the Hokage's ninja that they omitted killing intent. Powerful individuals like Orochimaru could completely immobilize Genin with their killing intent alone. I want you to help me find someone. Li Shang skipped his question and said. Kirisame Juazu's eyebrowless brow furrowed slightly. This guy was really confident. What is your password? Life and death. The cycle continues. Pai Ba Shizong immediately stood up, his fists clenched. What, is my password incorrect? Li Shang saw his expression and was somewhat puzzled. Could it be that Shisui and Itachi changed his password? No, Pai Ba Shizong shook his head and said, because I rarely hear this password. 
To be more precise, it was the second time he heard it. The last time was from Uchiha Itachi. He encountered him after he defected from Kurigakur and was instantly killed. But Uchiha Itachi said that his strength was not bad, and if he joined Tendo, he would spare him. Pai Ba Shizong had already planned to find a force after leaving Kurigakur, so he readily agreed. According to the procedure, in order to prevent someone from accidentally overhearing the password, you also need to explain the meaning of this sentence. Pai Ba Shizong's attitude became much more respectful. Li Shang nodded, as the rules were set by him in the first place. The purpose was to ensure that even if the finger was lost, he could still borrow the power of Tendo. It means that life and death are constantly alternating and never ending. Hum, there's also my Q stack behind, you're dead. May I ask which of the seven are you? Pai Ba Shizong took a deep breath. Uchiha Itachi left a great shadow on him. Otherwise, according to his character, he wouldn't be so humble. In addition, he assumed that all seven managers of Tendo had the same strength as Uchiha Itachi. You don't need to know. Just help me find the body of Hazuka Manjetsu. Li Shang thought for a moment and said. Although bringing Uchiha Itachi and Shisui here could announce the final outcome for Kurigakur, the risk was still considerable. Aside from his own clearance evaluation, it would be troublesome if it attracted Nagato's attention. Hazuka Manjetsu As one of the seven swordsmen of the mist, Pai Ba Shizong naturally knew about this junior. He has been dead for almost two years, so it's highly likely that the body is no longer there. Ninja corpses have considerable value. If someone discovers it, they will definitely not miss the opportunity. In addition, accidents can also be caused by wild animals or weather. It's okay, just do your best. Li Shang waved his hand. Since Yakushi Kabuto was able to perform the impure world reincarnation on Hazuka Manjetsu and use the scroll, it proved that both his body and the scroll were still intact. One had to admit that this guy was quite skilled at grave robbing. Speaking of Yakushi Kabuto, Li Shang thought of a question. Did he follow Orochimaru? In the original story, he was a ninja from Konoha and worked for Danzo. But Danzo was not a good person. He forced Yakushi Kabuto to kill his foster mother, Yakushi no no. So, in a state of despair, Yakushi Kabuto accepted Orochimaru's invitation and fled Konoha. Although the specific timeline was unknown, Yakushi Kabuto was still young. After all, Naruto and Sasuke were only five years old. If Danzo returned to the Pure Land in advance, this incident might not have happened. The chances of Yakushi Kabuto leaving Konoha would be greatly reduced. If that were the case, Li Shang would have a better chance of being valued by Orochimaru. Do you know Yakushi Kabuto? Li Shang looked at Pai Ba Shizong. After all, existing information should not be wasted. I do. I heard he is a medical genius from Konoha. Good information. Li Shang asked again, what about your decapitating carving knife? It's in the hands of Momochi Zabuza. Pai Ba Shizong flashed a hint of embarrassment and said, Originally, I wanted to invite him to join Tendo, but unexpectedly, the decapitating carving knife lost to him. Where is he now? In the land of waves. Pai Ba Shizong thought that Li Shang was going to deal with Momochi Zabuza and said, I hope that the adult can return the decapitating carving knife to me when the time comes. Li Shang stayed at the Izakaya for three days and played at the casino for three days as well. As the boss, Yakushi Kabuto provided him with funds and said that he could take away any money he won. But Li Shang lost everything. He couldn't help but complain that this guy lacked emotional intelligence. He should have arranged things with the casino in advance so that he could win and be happy. Anyway, Li Shang would never admit that he had bad luck. His lucky ex was not fake after all. It must be said that there is strength in numbers. If Yakushi Kabuto could find the body of Hazuka Manjetsu, there was no reason why Tenma couldn't find it. Li Shang glanced around and picked up the scroll. As a member of the Hazuka clan, he had seen the specific contents in the records, so he quickly confirmed that this was what he wanted. Thank you. Li Shang also took the body with him. It wasn't because of any special preference. It was just that leaving Hazuka Manjetsu's body exposed in the wilderness was too heartless. Back in Kurigakur, Li Shang buried him. Although Hazuka Suigetsu was sad due to the cruel reality in recent years, he didn't cry bitterly. Even though he was only four years old, he had become accustomed to life and death. As Turumi Mei said, 
Kurigakur indeed had no future like this. A summoning scroll. Turumi Mei was first surprised, then angry. She stared at Li Shang and asked, Why didn't you tell me and went out on your own? Because I wasn't sure if I could find it. Li Shang casually explained. The reason was weak, but fortunately, his identity didn't make people doubt him. In addition to being Turumi Mei's disciple, he was also the only heir of the Hazuka clan. It was not wrong for him to work hard to retrieve the family treasure. Kurigakur is very dangerous. Don't go out casually anymore. Your cousin is already a warning for you. You shouldn't follow in his footsteps. Turumi may earnestly advise. She was the one who least wanted to see Li Shang in trouble. At the age of seven, he already had this level of ability. He would definitely be the pillar of Kurigakur in the future. He was absolutely her precious darling. At this moment, she had already started thinking from the perspective of the Mazukaj. It's a pity that this scroll is of no use. Turumi may sighed. Where could they find seven Janin to form the seven ninja swordsmen now? They couldn't change their current predicament at all. It's not necessarily. Li Shang shook his head and said, We can bring back Zabuza Momochi. He has already become a rogue ninja. Chojuro, who was standing beside them, mustered up the courage to interject. He was shy by nature and couldn't help but envy Li Shang and Turumi Mei's lively conversation. He became a rogue ninja because he wanted to assassinate the Mazukage. Li Shang reminded, at that time, we didn't know that the Mazukage was being controlled. His intention was to end the chaos in the bloody mist. He remembered from the original story that although Zabuza Momochi left because of his failure, he continued to make money outside and prepared for a comeback. Unfortunately, he encountered Uzumaki Naruto, who was still a novice but destined to be the child of prophecy, and his two teammates. Although Zabuza fought against Ashura with his feet and Indra with his fists, and had a difficult battle with the future Hokage Kakashi, in the end, he left on a crane, leaving behind his deep friendship with Haku. Hum, if they could convince Zabuza, it would be like getting two for the price of one. Turumi Mei fell into contemplation upon hearing this. She didn't have a good impression of rogue ninjas, but Zabuza Momochi did have his reasons, and at this moment, she needed strong individuals. Zabuza is no longer in the land of water. Turumi Mei thought of another problem. Who should go find him? She and Ao couldn't leave Kurigakur. Otherwise, if something happened to the Mizukage, they wouldn't be able to rush back. Only Chojuro. Turumi Mei subconsciously looked at him. Chojuro noticed her gaze and immediately lowered his head, not daring to meet her eyes. Quote dot 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 quote. Turumi Mei felt uncomfortable. This kind of personality really wasn't suitable for being a ninja. Especially in Kurigakur. But she doesn't have a second person to use. Although Anbu ninjas are capable, they lack strength. Chojuro is able to wield the twin swords Haramakare because he is indeed worthy of inheriting the title of one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. I'll go with him, Li Shang took the opportunity to speak up. No, Turumi may immediately refuse. She would rather lose Chojuro than lose Li Shang. Medical ninjas are really scarce. And Li Zhang's skills are not low. Even in Konoha, he can be considered a genius. I am confident that I can persuade Zabuza, and with Chojuro, unless we encounter a strong enemy, there shouldn't be any problems, Li Shang smiled, I have some confidence in my persuasion skills. Turumi Mei rubbed her forehead in frustration. She felt like she was going through menopause before becoming Mizukage. But Li Shang is indeed eloquent. She has experienced it firsthand. Originally, Turumi Mei wanted to recruit Li Shang as a bodyguard, just like Chojuro, but ended up being persuaded and became his mentor. The most absurd thing is that she hasn't taught him any ninjutsu. Her lava style and boil style, Li Shang has yet to find a place to start. And the Hazuka clan possesses water style secret techniques that can rival Keke Jenke. A fledgling bird will eventually grow up, Sensei, Li Shang shrugged and said, I've wanted to say this for a long time, you worry too much about Chojuro, and now you're starting to worry about me. From the original work, it can be seen that Turumi Mei always carries Chojuro wherever she goes. But with Chojuro's personality, he must be independent and his confidence must be cultivated. It's hard to change that by staying by Turumi Mei's side. Because Chojuro likes her, plus she is too outstanding and dominant, it will only worsen his inferiority complex. Turumi Mei-sama, it's not. Chojuro hesitated, wanting to retort. 
But when he became anxious, his mind went blank, and he didn't know what to say. Tarumi May raised her hand and said, Haim said it right, spoiling someone won't help them grow. She looked at Li Shang with obvious admiration in her eyes. To be like this at the age of seven, what will it be like in another eight or ten years? It's really something to look forward to. Chojuro wanted to say something but noticed her expression. He felt a bit stimulated and said firmly, I will definitely protect Haim. This is the loudest you've ever said in front of me, Turumi Mei couldn't help but laugh. Chojuro immediately deflated, his face turning slightly red, his eyes scanning the ground as if there were gold there. You two should go early and come back early, Turumi Mei understood Chojuro's personality, if he could change so suddenly, it could only be possession. And the one who was truly possessed, Li Shang, nodded. Finally, the goal was achieved. Indeed, the strongest Keke Jenke is the power of persuasion. Even someone as dominant as Turumi Mei couldn't resist. After leaving Kurigakur, Zabuza became a wandering ninja, accepting any high-paying employment, Chojuro introduced the information about Anbu, he is currently in the Land of Waves. Why is that? Li Shang knew that in the original work, Zabuza was hired by a wealthy man named Gaidu in the Land of Waves, and then encountered Kakashi's Team 7. But that was six years later. But it's quite miserable to not be able to gather enough funds to return to Kurigakur in six years. That's why you shouldn't be too much of a ninja. Zabuza is already a rogue ninja, but still follows the ninja code. Although it's to maintain his good reputation, why not do things secretly? Robbing Gaidu, that's a quick way to make money. It seems like he was being pursued by a rogue ninja in the Land of Waves, Chojuro said. So he's doing bounty hunter work, Li Shang immediately thought of Kakuzu. Indeed, it's a fast way for ninjas to make money. Especially for confident and skilled ninjas. Li Shang easily found Zainobu and Bai. Apart from a few pirates that Chojiro took care of along the way, they didn't encounter any other troubles. What should we do now? Chojiro looked at the two of them and asked. He knew Zainobu's strength, so he kept his distance. Naturally, we should meet with them. Li Shang answered without hesitation. But, Zainobu is an extremely ruthless guy. I'm worried that we won't even have time to speak before he starts chasing us with his sword. Chojiro seemed hesitant. He wasn't afraid of fighting Zainobu, but he was afraid that Li Shang would be killed and he wouldn't be able to report back to Terumi Mei. So he leaned towards a more gentle approach, rather than a direct one. Rumors are just rumors. If Zainobu was truly heartless and unprincipled, he wouldn't have adopted Bai. Li Shang understood what he meant. But the time left for us is running out. His argument was logical and irrefutable. But what convinced Chojiro was the second half of the sentence. He didn't believe that Zainobu was a good person. Adopting Bai was definitely just to cultivate a tool. All go ahead. Chojiro perfectly executed Turumi Mei's command. Although his personality was problematic, he was undoubtedly a qualified ninja. You should leave your teacher. Li Shang casually said. Ha, huh, Chojiro instinctively looked at him, not understanding what he meant. Because if you stay by her side, you will always be submissive, and she won't like you. It can be seen from the original work that Turumi Mei likes men like Kakashi and Sasuke. Of course, being handsome is a prerequisite. Li Shang didn't have any intention of deceiving his teacher, so he distanced himself from Chojiro. Maybe one day it would come in handy. No, I don't like. Chojiro immediately started to refute, but he couldn't say that he didn't like her, so he ended up feeling embarrassed. Who are you? Zainobu and Bai noticed their approach. Chojiro, who was also on guard, couldn't care less about being shy. It's been a long time since I've encountered missed ninjas coming to capture me. Zainobu saw the forehead protectors on their bodies and recognized the dual swords Chojiro was carrying. He showed a cruel smile, gripped his decapitation sword, and said, it's a good warm-up. Bye, I'll leave that brat to you. Chojiro immediately drew his place, and with the corner of his eye, he glanced at Li Shang. It seemed like he was saying, I knew it would end up like this. Our purpose in coming here is not to capture you, but to invite you back to become the Mizukage. Li Zhang's tone was very calm. But the three people present were all shocked. Chojiro tried to signal with his eyes that something was wrong with this situation. Zainobu was momentarily stunned and angrily said, Are you joking with me? 
he hadn't been away from Karigakur for a particularly long time, so he was aware of the situation in the village. Becoming the Mazukage was indeed his goal, but it was not something he could achieve on his own. Because Turumi Mei was more popular, and she had the support of the elders. So according to the normal procedure, it would be difficult for Zainobu to become the Mazukage. I didn't come all this way to joke with you. If you miss this opportunity today, you won't have another chance. Hum, by then, you will become the catalyst for Team 7, contributing your own strength to the growth of Uzumaki Naruto and Uchiha Sasuke. It can be said that you will die a great death. Zainobu heard the contempt in his words and coldly said, even without you, I will return to Karigakur one day. Becoming the Mazukage is not about fighting and killing, but about social skills. Li Shang shook his head and said, you will never be able to become the Mazukage. After saying that, he leapt forward. The decapitation sword plunged straight into the spot where Zainobu had just stood. Chojiro cursed himself silently and quickly stood in front of Li Shang. He apologized, saying, I'm sorry, I was a bit distracted just now. It's okay, I understand. Li Shang replied, then looked at Zainobu and said, Anger will never make you the Mazukage. With a loud sound, the decapitation sword clashed with the place. Kid, I'm going to chop off your head. Zai Bi Yu Zan was already a hot tempered person, and being provoked by Li Shang made him extremely angry. I was furious, but Cho Ju Lang was not someone he could easily deal with. Look at your current performance. Li Shang continued to attack. It was impossible to have a calm and peaceful conversation with Zai Bi Yu Zan. In that case, let's fight first. Only Cho Ju Lang had a worried expression on his face. He wasn't confident that he could defeat Zai Bi Yu Zan. Bye, kill him. Zai Bi Yu Zan finally remembered his tool. Bai walked up to Li Shang and said softly, I'm sorry, but you must die. A gentle voice spoke coldly. But Li Shang understood that he was a gentle ninja. Follow me. Li Shang turned around and ran. His speed was extremely fast. Bai was slightly startled and quickly followed. Cho Ju Lang saw this and had a somewhat anxious expression, but there was nothing he could do. Your name is Bai, right? Li Shang stopped and introduced himself, saying, Hajiri Gurin. What kind of person are you? Bai felt puzzled. I want to kill you, shouldn't your reaction be more intense? He had been taught by Zai Bi Yu Zan and had killed many people, but Li Shang was the strangest person he had ever seen. I can see people very accurately. Li Shang smiled and said, you don't want to kill, but you willingly accept Zai Bi Yu Zan's orders, even if it goes against your own will. In the original work, Bai was an extremely kind-hearted ninja who disliked killing. But because of his tragic experience and being saved by Zai Bi Yu Zan, he felt needed and had the motivation to survive. Even if he was treated as a killing tool. Because I am Zai Bi Yu Zan's tool. Bai said expressionlessly, I exist because of him. An expected answer. Tools don't have emotions, but you do. Li Shang shook his head. Bai fell silent for a moment and said, I only have the feeling of protecting Zai Bi Yu Zan. All right, let's just leave it at that. Li Shang thought for a moment and said, If one day Zai Bi Yu Zan orders you to leave, what would you do? That won't happen, Bai said as if convincing himself, because I am useful to him. For him, the thing he feared the most was being abandoned. If Zai Bi Yu Zan is about to die, and you can save him, but he doesn't let you, what would you do? That's even more impossible. Bai didn't hesitate this time and answered quickly, Zai Bi Yu Zan wouldn't care about me. He would sacrifice me to save himself, he definitely wouldn't hesitate. Are you sure? Li Shang asked in return, I told you, I can see people very accurately. Do you believe that Zai Bi Yu Zan is the person in this world who cares about you the most? Bai trembled, he obviously didn't believe it, but he hoped it was true. Do you want to try? Li Shang mentioned his purpose for coming this time, we found out that the Mazukage of Karigakur is being controlled, so we hope Zai Bi Yu Zan can go back and help us. You're saying that him being the Mazukage is a lie. Bai was still more concerned about Zai Bi Yu Zan. No, as long as the control over the Mazukage is lifted, the next Mazukage might be on the agenda. As someone who has made great contributions, Zai Bi Yu Zan is qualified to compete for the position of Mazukage. Li Shang smiled and asked, Don't you believe that he can defeat the other competitors? I naturally believe, Bai said without hesitation. 
Then do you want to know how he really sees you? Just as a tool. Li Shang pointed in the direction of the battle and said, Zai Bi Yu Zan can't listen to anything right now, but you can make him calm down. I don't believe your speculation. Bai fell silent for a moment and said, but I want to know if it's true or not. Kurigakur is a bloody epitome of misery. He was born in a snowy village and inherited his mother's ice release. But the villagers despised and feared Keke Jenke. When his father discovered his mother's ice release, he led the villagers to kill her. When they were about to kill him, he used his ice release to fight back. Overnight, he became an orphan and wandered around the water country, eventually meeting Zabuza. Perhaps, no matter who it is, as long as they extend a helping hand to him, he is willing to repay them with his remaining life. In such circumstances, maintaining the necessary kindness is undoubtedly commendable. The only thing that is terrible is the tragic state of the world. Wait, no matter what happens, don't come out. Li Shang cautioned. White nodded silently. He knew Zabaza's ambition very well. If what Li Shang said was true, this was undoubtedly a great opportunity. He also didn't want to see Zabuza assassinate the Mazukage again. This method is the most dangerous. But White was also prepared. If he was deceived, he would kill Li Shang. Don't worry, I really want to invite Zabuza back to Kurigakur. Li Shang smiled and said, I'm not worried, White replied. There was still no expression on his face. Li Shang didn't expose him and walked towards the sparkling Zabuza and Haku. As Mist Shinobi, they were both skilled in silent assassination techniques, so they didn't use the mist to assassinate. They openly competed in swordsmanship and ninjutsu. Li Zhang's gaze shifted between the two of them. Haku was at a disadvantage. He was young, inexperienced, and not ruthless enough. Hiyuki, Haku noticed Li Shang first. Zabuza should have taken advantage of the moment when Haku was distracted to launch a surprise attack, but he didn't see White and his heart trembled. Where's White? Can you see me? Don't you understand? Li Shang retorted. This useless guy. Zabuza cursed angrily. The veins on his arm holding the decapitating sword bulged, and the killing intent in the air became extremely strong. Li Shang sensed his true emotions. No matter how ruthless a man is, there is always a warm side. No matter how useless he is, he is still my person. If you kill him, you will bury him with him. Zabuza leapt forward, and the decapitating sword whistled down towards Li Zhang's head. Who told you he's already dead? Li Shang remained fearless in the face of danger. But he didn't pretend to be this guy. Haku crossed his dual blades in front of him. Zabuza suddenly heard this news, the decapitating sword lost its follow-up attack, and he took a few steps back from the powerful force. After stabilizing himself, he asked, where's White? Haku didn't quite understand the current situation. He glanced at Li Shang and simply guarded him to prevent Zabuza from launching a surprise attack. Do you care about him? Li Shang didn't answer his question. He's just a tool to me, not worth caring about. Zabuza said coldly, but he's somewhat useful. A man who says one thing but means another. Li Shang smiled faintly and asked, if that's the case, why do you need to know where he is? Zabuza became inexplicably angry and said, I'll knock out your teeth one by one. Speaking of which, White and you are completely different kinds of people. Li Shang ignored his threat and said, but he is loyal to you. Zabuza fell silent but raised the decapitating sword again. He certainly knows Bai's true character, which is completely different from his own. But he is not capable of compromising. Gara never succumbs to threats. Unless he is given too much money, then he can tolerate it temporarily. Do you have no other means besides fighting? Li Shang sighed and said, I remember your wish was to end the chaos in Kurigakur, but you yourself are in chaos. Have you really thought about what you should do after becoming Mizukage? Quote dot 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 quote. Gara found it strange, a seven-year-old child lecturing him. And what the child said seemed to make sense. At least most ninjas couldn't have such insights. Thinking of Bai, Gara ultimately didn't make a move. He said, as long as I am strong enough, these are not problems. A typical mindset of the strong. In a sense, it's not wrong, but it cannot bring lasting peace. Just like how Uzumaki Naruto convinced everyone with a so-called dream and his fists. But in the end, it was only temporary. In Boruto, even Kurama was forced to disappear. Although it's partly the fault of the author, 
Uzumaki Naruto indeed did not achieve true peace. But I have to remind you, you don't have the qualification to discuss this matter with me from the perspective of strength. Li Shang said with emphasis, if you were strong enough, you should be stepping on my head right now. Seeing Gara's angry eyes again, Li Shang calmly took out a summoning scroll for a ninja sword. You should know what this scroll is. Kurigakur intends to rebuild the seven ninja swordsmen, and if you come back, you have the opportunity to become Mizukage. You can also practice your ideals, defeat all competitors, and prove your strength. Gara remained silent. Although he was hot-tempered, irritable, and ruthless, he wasn't a fool. Moreover, his weakness, Bai, was being held by someone making it rare for him to listen to others. What Li Shang said undoubtedly reminded him of the path he once wanted to take. But controlled by the manipulated Yagura, he could only resort to the most violent means. What about the current Mizukage? Gara thought of the key question. Clearly, the Mizukage is still there, so why is everyone thinking about seizing power? I believe you still possess the honor of Kurigakur ninjas, so I'm telling you this. The Mizukage has been controlled since a long time ago. What, even with Gara's temperament, it was difficult for him to be astonished upon hearing this truth. It was truly unbelievable. Such a thing has never happened in the ninja world. The five most powerful cage being controlled, it's simply outrageous. I invite you to come back because I want to resolve this matter and completely end the blood mist. Li Zhang's words reminded Gara of his original intention. The purpose of his wandering and taking on missions in various countries was for this, right? Seeing that he was somewhat moved, Li Shang let Bai come out. Bai lowered his head and seemed a bit afraid to meet Gara's gaze. His actions were more like a betrayal. Gara glanced at him, relieved to see that he had no injuries. He said, prepare yourself and come back to Kurigakur with me. This time, the Mizukage will definitely be mine. Bai immediately looked delighted but I won't forget about your collusion with outsiders. Gara coldly snorted and said, the punishment you deserve cannot be less. Bai smiled. Not far away, Chojuro scratched his head and asked, why do I feel that something is off with those two? Is that so? Li Shang sighed, if you had half of Bai's beauty and courage, maybe there would be hope for you and the teacher. Chojuro suddenly realized and was greatly shocked. Li Shang remembered the debate in his previous life about whether Bai was male or female. Later, his friend, after being beaten by society, had a great realization and said, isn't it better if Bai is male? Ahem. Back to the main topic. Resolving the matter between Gara and Bai, the gap with Obito has reached an acceptable level. Li Shang needs to think about how to leave a deep impression on this guy. When they returned, the four of them rented a boat. As per Li Zhang's request, they all disguised themselves. They wore white kimonos, looking extremely elegant. Chong Juro had the appearance of someone who had never seen the world before, and he stole glances several times. After arriving in Kurigakur, the four of them avoided attention and sneaked into Terumi Mei's house. The main reason was to prevent Zabuza and Haku from being detected by Obito, so as to avoid any other complications. When Terumi Mei opened the door and saw the four of them, her gaze lingered on Li Shang. She was surprised that Zabuza had been convinced in just a few days. Including the process, the conversation probably didn't exceed two or three hours. This kind of efficiency was astonishing. It was also the first time she truly understood the saying, words are more powerful than fists. Zabuza, long time no see. Turumi Mei smiled faintly, facing Zabuza's expression that kept people at a distance, she didn't lose her momentum. Zabuza nodded and said, you need to understand, I came back to compete for the position of Mizukage. Straightforward, just like his decapitation sword. Big, direct, and hard. Turumi Mei was slightly taken aback by his straightforwardness. But this kind of quick attack was refreshing. She liked talking to people like him. Turumi Mei glanced at Li Shang and probably guessed what he had said to persuade Zabuza to come back. She didn't blame him in her heart but instead felt that Li Shang was bold, intelligent, and knew how to hit the nail on the head. Without a doubt, he was a good candidate for Mizukage. As for Zabuza, he didn't have the strength to suppress everything, and his personality was not suitable for Mizukage, only suitable for charging into battle. The Mizukage should be someone capable. Turumi Mei said without concern, if you have the ability, I will be your assistant. 
Zabuza fell silent for two seconds. He knew that in their first encounter, he had been completely defeated in terms of mentality. Not an ordinary woman. When he was in Kurigakur, although he knew of Tarumi Mei's reputation, they didn't have much interaction. Because in his opinion, the only correct answer was the sword in his hand, not compromising. Zabuza thought of Li Zhang's soul-searching yesterday. He admitted that he was indeed not prepared to become Mazukage. This is by, right. Tarumi Mei looked him up and down, a beautiful young man. And according to her investigation, Bai was undoubtedly a super genius. He possessed the rare bloodline limit of ice release in Kurigakur and was only eight years old. Tarumi Mei Sama. Bai responded, Now that you've come back, Kurigakur will be your new home. Tarumi Mei reached out her hand and said, And like you, your past won't happen again. A mist appeared in the palm of her hand. A sizzling sound. The strong corrosiveness caused the air to melt. Bai's body trembled. This was a bloodline limit. Instantly, his gaze towards Tarumi may soften. He thought, she's a good person. Zabuza pursed his lips. This woman is really good at stirring up trouble. Clearly, I was the one who came first. Although he wasn't worried about Bai betraying them, it made him seem incompetent, didn't it? When do we start? Zabuza changed the topic. In a few days, with your participation, we already have a chance of winning. Tarumi Mei explained her plan, Ao will use the Bayakugan to break Mizukage Sama's control, and then he will assist us. Li Shang raised an eyebrow. He had forgotten about Yagura, the Jinchuriki. Although it sounded ridiculous that the Bayakugan could break the Mangekyo Sharingan's Genjutsu, that was how it was in the original story. If there was a betrayal by the Jinchuriki, there shouldn't be a problem. Li Shang blinked his eyes. Since Obito was leaving, it was only right to give him a small gift, both emotionally and logically. Okay, there's nothing more to say. Chong Juro, arrange accommodations for them. Turumi Mei ordered. Chong Juro immediately left with Zanjetsu and Bukuya, leaving only Li Shang behind. You really are a disciple who constantly surprises people. With no outsiders present, Turumi Mei seemed much more casual. She stretched lazily and said, I want to give you a new position, Mizukage's advisor, how about it? Not really. Li Shang thought to himself, I'm only seven years old, and I'm an undercover agent. I would rather establish a hospital in Kurigakur. A hospital will definitely be established. Turumi Mei frowned and said, but it would be a waste of your abilities to be stuck in a hospital. Let's talk about it later, I'm still a child. Li Shang turned to Zanjetsu and said, I convinced Zanjetsu to compete for Mizukage, is that okay? It's not a big deal. Turumi Mei smiled and said, if he wants to be Mizukage, he has to pass my test first, but I doubt he has the ability. Haki, show yourself. Li Shang raised his thumb and said, you talk too much. Turumi Mei waved her hand and said, since you have the summoning scroll, find the other swords and see who can inherit them. I have a candidate, Hazuka Juzo. Li Shang explained, Zanjetsu's decapitation sword was stolen from him, but he didn't die. Turumi Mei's eyes lit up involuntarily. This was undoubtedly good news. Even though Hazuka Juzo was weak, he was still a janin, and for the current Kurigakur, he would definitely be a huge help. Where is he now? Shimotsuki Island. Li Shang casually mentioned a place, not far from Kurigakur, let me go this time. Turumi Mei undoubtedly had her reasons. Zanjetsu had performed excellently in his mission. There was no reason to change personnel. After Li Shang left, he went to the same Izakaya as last time. Greetings, sir. Hazuka Juzo's attitude remained the same. Li Shang nodded slightly and was about to speak when he heard him ask, because you used the highest command, I reported it to headquarters and they asked me a question. What is your finger ring code? Baluo. Li Shang had anticipated this. Hazuka Juzo's body trembled, and without further questioning, he said, what can I do for you this time? Li Shang didn't speak, but took out the scroll and started pouring out the blades. There were only three. Dull Blade, Dujeki, Exploding Blade, Haimatsu, Long Blade, Hausen. Choose one. Li Shang tried summoning the other four, but it didn't work. Probably because they already had owners and couldn't be summoned. Otherwise, Higetsu Suigetsu wouldn't have been running around collecting ninja swords. Why isn't there the decapitation sword? Hazuka Juzo couldn't help but ask. It's in Zanjetsu's hands, 
If you want to rejoin the seven ninja swordsmen, you'll have to choose another one. Are you saying? Kazuka Juzo was somewhat surprised. He thought he would never return to Kurigakur in his lifetime. Kurigakur is about to undergo a huge change. If you become one of the seven ninja swordsmen, it will be more advantageous for Tendo. I see. Kazuka Juzo immediately understood Li Zhang's meaning. Tendo had always wanted to infiltrate the upper echelons of Kurigakur, but it was impossible as long as the Mazukage was under control. Now that the seven ninja swordsmen were being rebuilt, it was a perfect opportunity. He just didn't know who this person was, who knew such information. Kazuka Juzo picked up the exploding blade, Haimatsu. This blade was similar in size to the decapitation sword, so it suited him. Li Shang doesn't like the seven blades of the mist. It doesn't fit his aesthetic. He prefers the katana. In the world of Shinobi, in his past life, he liked the Tang sword and the Han sword. Because he found them exceptionally beautiful. Li Shang put away the remaining two blades. The blunt blade Dujeki is a Shinobi tool with a rope connecting a knife on one side and a hammer on the other. The long blade sewing needle is an enlarged sewing needle that makes Li Shang feel like an old woman. In short, they are two unconventional weapons. In fact, Li Shang had a speculation long ago. Is it possible that most of the seven blades of the mist are just for show? The only truly magical one is Samahata. Probably because seven is a magical number. Tomorrow, go to Kurigakur and find Turumi Mei. Li Shang instructed, hide your identity before meeting her. Although he revealed his codename, Bai Luo, he is not ready to reveal himself yet. The first reason is that he doesn't have his finger protector with him. The second reason is that he wants to complete his clearance mission and find a way to contact Orochimaru. Trivial matters can be handled by Tenju, but when it comes to simulated evaluations, he can't afford to be careless. I understand. Even if Piba Juzo doesn't understand, he still needs to make it clear. After seeing Li Shang off, he turned and entered a secret room. According to headquarters, orders, if it's by Luo, he must immediately report back. What Piba Juzo doesn't know is that the person who possesses Bai Luo has been missing for a long time. Li Shang returned to Kurigakur. He already had an idea of Obito's farewell gift. It wasn't anything grand, just a secretly slipped letter. To scare him away, Li Shang didn't want Obito to intensify his actions due to Kurigakur's resistance and bring members of Akatsuki over. Although Nagato probably wouldn't let him go too far. At this time, Akatsuki should be focused on making money, and even the plan to capture the tailed beasts hasn't been launched. Although Yuki Yagura is under control, he still has Anbu protection. Li Shang obtained an Anbu identity from Ao. Ao is the leader of the Anbu, and he readily agreed to the request without even asking for a reason. As Turumi Mei's disciple, Li Shang was able to convince Zabuza Momochi and Piba Juzo one after another, so having an Anbu identity was nothing. Without a doubt, Ao already sees him as the successor to Mizukage, just like Chojuro. Compared to Chojuro's personality, he is more willing to invest in Li Shang. Three years, another three years, and I'll become the boss. Li Shang casually complained. It's obviously easier to rise to power in Kurigakur than in Konoha village. If you're handsome, you can even become the riding position. Li Shang, dressed in Anbu attire, secretly placed a letter in Yuki Yagura's office. The next day, Obito saw the letter. Or more accurately, it was handed to him by Yuki Yagura. He only glanced at it, and his body trembled. The envelope didn't contain a long message, just a drawing. It depicted him and Rin Nohara. And it was from when they had just graduated. Instantly, he had a feeling of being haunted. No one besides Black Zetsu and Uchiha Madara could possibly know his true identity. Where did you get this letter from? Obito asked with a dark expression. I found it on the desk. Yuki Yagura answered expressionlessly, I don't know who put it there. Obito instinctively tightened his grip on the photo. A strange feeling surged within him. He felt that these past two years had been extremely unlucky. First, he was taught a lesson by Uchiha Itachi in Konoha, and now he encountered such a warning in Kurigakur, which he had controlled for many years. Yes, in his opinion, it was a silent warning. His brows furrowed as he noticed a line of words after the photo. When you try to manipulate others, you are also being manipulated. Obito suddenly felt a chilling sensation. 
but quickly, he sneered and said, playing tricks. He burned the photo and fell into silence for a moment, but the gloom in his heart couldn't be dispelled. Who is this person exactly? The sound of knocking on the door. Orochimaru walked in and said, I plan to leave in two days, but I want to take Higurashi Hiyuki with me. Whatever. Obito didn't even look at him. He wasn't in the mood. Orochimaru licked his lips. If he wasn't unsure, he would have made a move already. Unfortunately, this guy has a space-time ninjutsu, so he can't catch him. Orochimaru doesn't know about Mangekio Sharingan, so he thinks it's space-time ninjutsu, not dojutsu. If he knew the truth, he would be even more covetous of the Sharingan. Originally, Obito was going to join Akatsuki as Aoi after the death of the Red Sand Scorpion, but because he was frustrated in Konoha, he planned to manipulate Nagato earlier and go to Konoha to carry rice. And Orochimaru went to Kurigakur, one was to meet his new teammate Hoshigaki Kisame, and the other was because he found Kimamaro, so he wanted to take advantage of it. At the same time, Li Shang was playing cards with Chojuro and Abushi Juzo. Because they were bored, they were waiting for Tarumi Mei's orders. Li Shang thought about it and decided to play cards. Zabuza was completely disdainful, and Haku naturally wouldn't join. Chojuro, hesitation leads to defeat. The longer you think, the worse it might be. A2, Chojuro gritted his teeth and said, Pass. Li Shang waved his hand. Chojuro immediately breathed a sigh of relief and played three cards with a three and a four. Follow. Li Shang smirked, played three cards with a four and a three, and then ended with a pair. It was simply perfect. Quote question mark question mark question mark quote. Chojuro immediately became dejected. Chojuro, today I will teach you a lesson. When playing cards, you should play with a smile. Li Shang happily accepted his 1002. Just then, Turumi Mei walked in. Chojuro immediately stood up and instinctively hid the cards in his hand. Just like a student peeking at black stockings during class and being caught by the teacher. Li Shang, on the other hand, remained completely calm. Turumi Mei said helplessly, Chojuro, learn from Hiyuki more. Chojuro nodded hesitantly. Forget it. Let's get back to business. Prepare yourselves. Turumi Mei said decisively, success or failure lies in tonight. They didn't want to wait any longer. For Kurigakur, if the Mizukage is controlled for even a minute, it is a minute of shame. If it gets out, it will surely be a disgrace. If Li Shang knew her thoughts, he would comfort her and say that Gozu Yagura is not the most embarrassing cage. The setting sun hung in the sky. Ao and Turumi Mei paid their respects to Gozu Yagura. What's the matter? Gozu Yagura looked like a teenager from the outside, but in reality, he was already a grandfather. His rare green hair seemed to reflect his current situation. Ao looked up, took off his eye patch, and activated his Byakugan. His invisible eye power quickly expanded. Obito, who was hiding in the dark, suddenly trembled. Not good. He felt that Gozu Yagura had broken free from his control. In the next moment, the Mizukage's building collapsed with a bang. Three thick tails covered in spikes attacked him at an extremely fast speed. A vast amount of chakra filled the surroundings. It was enough to show Gozu Yagura's anger. Water style. Great damn repair. Everyone present was skilled and reacted quickly. Hoshigaki Kisame jumped into the air and spat out a sea. Hiyuki, step back. Turumi Mei formed hand seals with both hands and sprayed a large amount of corrosive acid from her mouth, effortlessly piercing through the water waves and enveloping Hoshigaki Kisame. She's a dangerous woman. No one can withstand a bite. Perhaps this is also one of the reasons why she can't find a boyfriend. Li Shang wisely stayed away. In Li Zhang's opinion, among the seven members of the previous shinobi swordsman, Hoshigaki Kisame's strength undoubtedly ranked in the top three or perhaps even the strongest, which is also reasonable. In addition to water style and samahata, Hoshigaki Kisame naturally possessed an extremely vast amount of chakra. He was known as the tailed beast without a tail. Because of this, he didn't need to consider the consumption of his own chakra, and every ninjutsu he used could reach its maximum power. After all, the power of ninjutsu doesn't solely depend on its rank. For example, Uchiha Madara's great fireball technique is comparable to an S-rank ninjutsu. Hoshigaki Kisami's powerful water style caused the already ruined Mizukage building to be submerged in the ocean. The rest of the battles were also intense. 
Obito had no pressure dealing with Yagura, and even had the leisure to share the pressure with Orochimaru. He occasionally threw a fire-style ninjutsu at Chojuro, Zabuza, and Momochi. The scene was both fiery and chaotic, but a balance was formed in a short period of time. At this moment, Orochimaru bit his thumb and pressed it against the water's surface. Waves surged into the sky, reaching over dozens of meters. Li Shang couldn't dodge in time and was drenched. The others were the same. Fortunately, Turumi Mei had previously evacuated the residents near the Mizukage building and instructed them not to come over no matter what happened. A giant snake embroidered with purple stripes appeared. Its size far exceeded the half-tailed beast transformation of Yagura. It was Orochimaru's strongest summoning beast, Manda. What an annoying environment, Orochimaru, I want a hundred people. The first thing Manda did after appearing was not to attack, but to negotiate. Orochimaru casually nodded. He was already used to it. Manda rushed at an extremely fast speed like a surfboard, reaching Zabaza's front. Its mountain-like body did not affect its speed. Zabuza swung his decapitating sword towards its triangular head. But it was shaken away by a tremendous force, and his body crashed into the water, creating a splash. Manda opened its blood-filled mouth, aiming directly at Zabaza's falling position. Momochi Shitaro trembled and his exploding blade, foam exploded. Scrolls filled with explosive tags flew out from the blade. That was the characteristic of this blade. Although it was called a shinobi sword, its true power lay in the explosive tags. Similar to Didera, they believed that explosions were art. The explosive tags ignited instantly. A violent explosion rose into a mushroom cloud on the water's surface. The clash of water and fire suddenly filled the air with smoke. The sudden change in the environment undoubtedly favored the Karigakur ninja. Zabuza disappeared into the mist. His speed was even faster than before. In the blink of an eye, his decapitating sword cut Orochimaru's body in half. But the expected blood did not appear. Zabuza was slightly stunned, immediately hiding in the mist again. The next moment, Manda's snake tail fell. Because of its size, its range was wide. Zabuza was directly smashed out. Immediately, countless mud-colored lion majesties appeared around him. Chojuro's flounder emitted a glow, gathering chakra, and instantly exploded into a ball of light. The light pierced through the lion majesties. Blood merged with the water, instantly creating a pool of blood. Zabuza didn't have time to express his gratitude and quickly jumped away. Most ninjas are helpless against giant-tailed beasts or summoning beasts due to their massive size. Because ordinary ninjutsu and physical attacks are difficult to break through their defenses. And ninjas have high attack and low defense. As time goes on, the probability of losing naturally increases. Li Shang, who was watching from a distance, couldn't help but frown. Although he didn't really care about summoning beasts, he had to admit that it was really difficult to deal with them until a certain level. However, everyone present was a top-notch powerhouse, so dealing with Amanda shouldn't be impossible. But there was still Orochimaru. Yagura, also known as Yagura of the Waterfall, realized the problem at hand. With a tremendous shock, the complete form of the three tails appeared completely before their eyes. Its appearance resembled that of a turtle, but covered in spikes. Because Yagura was a perfect Jinchuriki, he did not lose consciousness at this moment. And the large sea created by Kisame Hoshigaki also greatly helped him. The three tails instantly accelerated and bit down on the seven swordsmen of the mist. Blood splattered without restraint, painful screams resounded. The seven swordsmen desperately tried to break free. The two colossal creatures clashed, causing a tsunami. Orochimaru and the others had to temporarily stop. Li Shang also ran further away. With his vision, he could no longer see the situation at the center of the battle. He didn't know how it was in the original work, but now it was undoubtedly a fierce battle. Li Shang could consider it as watching a VR action movie up close. Just then, his body suddenly stiffened. Orochimaru, who was supposed to be at the Mizukage's building, appeared in front of him. Kijitsu Higitsu. Orochimaru licked his tongue and said, Are you interested in leaving with me? Hey hey, Uncle Snake, oh no, Aunt Snake, what about your mouth technique? Don't I deserve a few more words from you? Li Shang remembered how Orochimaru recruited Kimimaro and others, always speaking so persuasively, on par with his eloquence and talent. 
But this also proved that Orochimaru was in a hurry now and had no mood for rhetoric. The three tails unleashed its full power, and Obito had already planned to retreat, no longer entangling with Kuridikar. Li Shang blinked. Should I symbolically resist, or should I yield to Ant Snake? Orochimaru tilted his head, and Li Zhang's lack of response seemed a bit bewildered to him. After all, he was just a seven-year-old child. Just as he was about to make a move, suddenly a person appeared between him and Li Shang. All Li Shang saw was his back, a familiar symbol. The Uchiha fan. It was Uchiha Itachi who came. You're a ninja from Konoha. Orochimaru was stunned. He had never seen Uchiha Itachi before, but the Konoha forehead protector and ninja attire on him were quite familiar. Orochimaru. Uchiha Itachi glanced at his Akatsuki uniform and calmly said, It seems my luck is good. Orochimaru's face turned cold. This attitude made him feel slighted. Even in Akatsuki, no one dared to ignore him. It is indeed your luck to die by my hands. Two giant snakes flew out from Orochimaru's sleeve, like vines, tightly entangling Uchiha Itachi from head to toe. Uchiha Itachi made no movement and calmly looked up at him. Orochimaru's body trembled, and only those scarlet eyes remained in his line of sight. It was the Sharingan. He realized it was not good and instinctively closed his eyes. But it was already too late. Everything around turned blood red. His body was pierced by wooden wedges. In the next moment, unimaginable pain spread through his limbs. Orochimaru realized that he was under a genjutsu and quickly shouted, Genjutsu release. But it was useless. Release. 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 Orochimaru showed an incredulous expression and said, Why can't I release it? This is impossible. This emotion was just like when Li Shang couldn't solve a calculus problem. Unable to solve it all along, in the end, he could only write a bare solution on it. But Orochimaru's situation was even more miserable. Because he himself was an all-around ninja, his proficiency in genjutsu was enough to be called a genjutsu master. But unfortunately, his abilities were no match for the natural talent of others. The Mangekio Sharingan was not something that could be surpassed through effort. It's useless. With your strength, you can't possibly dispel my illusion. Uchiha Itachi's voice had no emotional fluctuations. It was as if he was facing not one of the legendary Sanin, but an ordinary genin. Orochimaru exuded a gloomy aura all over his body. His expression was extremely ugly. He had always pursued immortality and mastering all ninjutsu. Uchiha Itachi's words were an unprecedented insult to him. The thing that Orochimaru took pride in seemed to have no effect in front of him. Even though he had the curse mark as a last resort and was not afraid of death. He understood that his strength was far inferior to Uchiha Itachi. Those eyes were definitely not ordinary Sharingan. A glimmer of light flashed in Orochimaru's snake-like pupils. It was possible for him to obtain it. Just then, he suddenly noticed that the pain in his body had greatly diminished. A painting emerged in the blood-red illusionary world. The painting depicted a boy of about 10 years old. Surprisingly, it was Uchiha Shisui. After receiving information from Ibiki Morino, Uchiha Itachi arrived in Kurigakur in just over a day. He even used Suzano. Uchiha Shisui's disappearance had thrown him and Shisui into chaos. Now that he had received news about him, he absolutely couldn't miss it. Have you seen this person in Kurigakur? Uchiha Itachi's tone still sounded calm. Orochimaru looked at it, feeling very unfamiliar. According to his memory, if he had seen him, it would be impossible to forget. Who exactly was this person? To make Uchiha Itachi rush from Konoha to Kurigakur. Orochimaru licked his lips and asked, I have seen him. Do you want to know where he is? He planned to obtain some useful information. But Uchiha Itachi's reaction was completely different from what he had imagined. Orochimaru instantly lost consciousness. A few seconds later, he woke up and let out a scream. Flames were burning his internal organs. An unimaginable desire appeared in his eyes. With his intelligence, he naturally knew what had just happened. He was actually being controlled, and he had no ability to resist. What kind of power did those eyes possess? At this moment, Orochimaru was not afraid, but rather excited to see the new world. At the same time, outside, Li Shang took a deep breath. Orochimaru was screaming like a slaughtered pig. It would be troublesome if he died. 
although he could be resurrected, it would still take time. Fortunately, Uchiha Itachi didn't know about the living corpse reincarnation. Otherwise, if he sealed Orochimaru with a ten-fist sword, Orochimaru would have nowhere to cry. Li Shang gritted his teeth. The current situation was very dangerous, but it was also an opportunity. If he saved Orochimaru, he could naturally join the Hidden Sound Village. If Orochimaru refused to carry out the Leaf Collapse plan, he could provide a little assistance. He just needed to perfect the details to avoid arousing suspicion. Sir from Konoha, Li Shang raised his hand and said, over at the Mazukage's building, there is a masked ninja wearing the same clothes as him fighting our Kurigakur's Mazukage. Can you help? Before he could finish his words, Uchiha Itachi had already disappeared. Compared to Orochimaru, there was no doubt that Obito had a greater attraction to him. But before he left, he also left a big gift for Orochimaru. Burning flames. Without any surprises, Orochimaru would soon be burned to death. Li Shang quickly formed hand seals. Waves of water surged onto Orochimaru's body, extinguishing the flames. Let's go. Head north. Orochimaru only managed to say this sentence before he passed out. He had suffered torment in the illusion and his body was once again roasted by fire. It was difficult for his will to hold on. Li Shang carried him and ran. He was also worried that Uchiha Itachi would come back. At the seaside, he felt a tremendous and earth-shattering surge of chakra. When he turned around, it turned out to be Suzano. Oh, poor Obito, may God bless you. After Li Shang finished speaking, he immediately jumped back. The sound of breaking wind rang out. Three snowflake-shaped crystal shurikens fell where he had just stood. Orochimaru-sama is injured. Li Shang had already guessed who launched the attack. Red Lotus, possessing crystal style. Injured. A female ninja wearing a green coat immediately appeared and, upon noticing Orochimaru, quickly asked, what happened? Now is not the time to talk, let's hurry and leave. Haven't you seen that thing behind us? Li Shang carried Orochimaru onto the boat. Red Lotus glanced at Suzano, shivered, picked up an oar, and paddled desperately. Do you know medical ninjutsu? She saw the green light in Li Zhang's hand and couldn't help but ask. Don't disturb. Li Shang concentrated intently and didn't have time to pay attention to her. Orochimaru's injuries were too severe. Although he was a genius, it was impossible for him to reach Tsunade's level at the age of seven. The green light in his right hand gradually condensed. The healing resuscitation technique, it was supposed to be performed by several ninjas working together. But now, there was only him. He was running out of chakra. For the first time, Li Shang experienced the feeling of being completely drained. He had no strength left in his body. His face was as pale as a corpse that had been dead for months. Are you okay? Red Lotus was startled when she saw that Li Shang hadn't moved for a long time and quickly asked. She pushed him, but there was no response. What should I do? Red Lotus had a good personality. Li Shang had saved Orochimaru, so she considered him one of her own. But now both of them were unconscious, and she didn't know medical ninjutsu. For a moment, she was at a loss. Fortunately, she quickly regained her composure and steered the boat towards the land of hot springs, then turned back to the hidden sound village in the land of rice fields. Pain, it hurts so much. Orochimaru woke up while holding his head. His body instinctively tensed, but when he saw Red Lotus, he relaxed. Sir, you're finally awake. Red Lotus had a tough time these past few days. She was worried that Orochimaru and Li Shang would meet their demise, and she was also worried that the powerful enemy who had injured Orochimaru would catch up to them. Now that Orochimaru had woken up, she had someone to rely on. My injuries, Orochimaru realized. He could feel the cells in his body growing frantically to fill the wound. He used medical ninjutsu to save you. Red Lotus quickly said, but he passed out afterwards. Can you see what's wrong? Orochimaru reached out and placed his hand on Li Zhang's forehead. After a moment, he said, he's fine. He just needs a few days of rest. He exhausted his chakra. A pensive look appeared in his eyes. As a scientist, he knew how severe his injuries were from Uchiha Itachi. The fact that Li Shang was able to save most of him was simply a genius among geniuses. There was no doubt that it gave him a great surprise. This child, perhaps, could be. Orochimaru licked his lips. 
using Li Shang for experiments or as a vessel would be too wasteful. He had plenty of geniuses under his command, such as Kimamaro and the Sound Four, but none of them knew medical ninjutsu. Li Shang could easily become his assistant. Most of Orochimaru's experiments involved the human body, and having an excellent medical ninja would undoubtedly save a lot of time. Of course, the prerequisite was that Li Shang had to be loyal enough. In this regard, Orochimaru was confident. Everyone in the Hidden Sound Village was wholeheartedly following him. During Li Zhang's coma, Uchiha Itachi and Terumi Mei were extremely anxious. Uchiha Itachi arrived at the Mizukage's office before Obito left. Without any hesitation, he activated Suzano to clear the area. Terumi Mei and the others watched in shock as he brutally beat the mysterious masked man. The terrifying scene was so intense that even the fully transformed Three Tails dared not approach. Fortunately, Uchiha Itachi had a clear target and did not attack them. Nevertheless, Terumi Mei and the others felt uneasy seeing such a powerful Konoha shinobi. Even if the Mizukage returned to normal, how many years would it take for Kurigakur to catch up to Konoha? In the midst of her wavering thoughts, Terumi Mei planned to implement an open policy to reconnect with the outside world. However, the specific impression formed within the Bloody Mist would take a considerable amount of time to reverse. Obito eventually escaped using Izanagi. Uchiha Itachi was caught off guard by this forbidden technique because he had no prior knowledge of it. But with his intelligence, he managed to capture some clues. Even among the Uchiha clan, those who knew and could use Izanagi were few and far between. It was only after taking control of the Anbu's access to the power center that Uchiha Itachi learned about the tragic past. The Uchiha clan had faced a crisis due to the immense power of Izanagi, which led to it being classified as a forbidden technique. The mysterious man must have been a high-ranking member of the Uchiha clan, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to use Izanagi. Uchiha Itachi planned to investigate the ancestors of the Uchiha clan to see if he could find any clues. Obito was just an unexpected surprise. His goal was to find Uchiha Nami. Uchiha Itachi questioned Terumi Mei and the others one by one, but none of them had seen her. Afterwards, he specifically met with Bawako Juzo. After hearing the detailed account, he narrowed down his search to Higurashi Hiyuki. Uchiha Itachi recalled the conversation he had with Orochimaru during their battle, and found it too coincidental. He also noticed Orochimaru's disappearance. But when he went to find Higurashi Hiyuki, he discovered that she had gone missing. Terumi Mei was already digging deep in Kurigakur. Her current mood was like finally accumulating a collection of figurines, only to have them destroyed by a mischievous child. Uchiha Itachi became more convinced that Higurashi Hiyuki was Uchiha Nami in disguise. However, there was something he didn't understand. From the time of Higurashi Hiyuki's birth until now, seven years had passed, and there were countless people in Kurigakur who could testify that she was a born and raised ninja. And one year ago, Uchiha Nami was still in Konoha. After much thought, Uchiha Itachi believed that there was only one truth. After Uchiha Nami left Konoha, she used her Sharingan to control Higurashi Hiyuki in Kurigakur, and planned to overthrow Obito's plan, while also having Bawako Juzo infiltrate the high ranks. It was a series of interconnected events. Just like her style. But if that was the case, Uchiha Itachi had lost his target. Because Higurashi Hiyuki had been captured by Orochimaru. Uchiha Nami must have given up control. In this helpless situation, he began aimlessly searching in Kurigakur. Hidden Sound Village, Li Shang was awakened, screams and cries mixed together, preventing him from sleeping peacefully. It was like a group of bratty kids crying. Li Shang opened his eyes. An unfamiliar ceiling, not white, but muddy. The room was dim, without sunlight. Li Shang speculated that he might be underground. Considering that he had saved Orochimaru before he fell into a coma, the location seemed obvious. Li Shang remembered that this snake liked environments that drove people with claustrophobia crazy. He got up from the bed, pushed open the door, and there were two long corridors on either side. The walls on both sides were lit with torches. The sound he had heard earlier came from the left. There's not a single person here. Li Shang thought for a moment and followed the corridor to a hall. It was not quite appropriate to call it a hall, it was more like an arena. There were many people wailing inside. Li Shang raised an eyebrow. 
a completely different energy from chakra was swirling in the air. Natural energy. It was Orochimaru's live broadcast of the scene where he placed a cursed seal. But Li Shang vaguely felt a sense of familiarity with natural energy. It seemed like he had seen it somewhere before. A flash of insight came to him, it was the magic of the type moon. Almost identical, but natural energy appeared more dense and solid. And this kind of magic, type moon also described it as true ether, the atmospheric magic of the divine era. Modern magicians, due to the significant decline of divine era magic, had to develop magic circuits and use their own magic. Simply put, true ether is the power used by gods and divine era magicians, and in modern times, except for a few places, it has almost disappeared. Li Shang stroked his chin and fell into deep thought. In a world where humans can survive, the composition of the atmosphere is almost the same. In other words, the ninja world is now in an environment similar to the divine era of type moon. The reason why I say similar is because there are not many places with abundant natural energy. The most famous ones are the three major sacred places for summoning beasts. And they are equivalent to the fantasy species in type moon, such as dragons, chimeras, etc. Sage chakra is the result of balancing physical energy, spiritual energy, and natural energy. Using sage chakra can enter sage mode. Li Shang became interested at this time. If sage mode could also be used in type moon, wouldn't he be unstoppable? But the premise is to find a substitute for chakra. Type moon only has magic and true ether. Developing sage mode is not such a simple matter. Do you want the power of the curse seal? Orochimaru appeared in front of him and asked. Li Shang looked up and asked, can I refuse? Not to mention anything else, the curse seal transformation is really ugly. Even Sasuke couldn't bear the cosmetic effect. You don't have the right to refuse. Orochimaru's tone changed and said, but you saved my life, so I'll give you a chance to explain. I can see that this power is very imperfect. Li Shang shook his head and said, I am a person who pursues perfection. If it is incomplete, I would rather not have it. Interesting. Orochimaru suddenly licked his tongue. Just by this short minute, Li Shang could see the problem with his curse seal. He was truly a born scientist. You are smarter than I imagined. Orochimaru pointed to the ninjas wailing in the pit and said, so you are more valuable than them. He almost said, I really like you. To receive praise from Orochimaru-sama, I should say that I am proud. Li Shang smiled and said. Orochimaru looked at him with interest and asked, since you know who I am, why aren't you afraid? I have been interested in medical ninjutsu since I was a child. The human body is truly amazing. It can not only create chakra, but also inherit bloodline limits. Li Shang said with longing, many times, I wonder what their essence is. Why can bloodline limits be passed down to future generations? But why can some people awaken them while others cannot? Can ordinary ninjas have bloodline limits? Orochimaru was stunned for a moment, then burst into laughter. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.